people call. Huh? The pay per view people. Uh, the next item, uh, Susan Secretary. Workshop item A, discussion <coughs> on citywide bond program for paving streets and curing drainage problems within city limits of Brownsville. And discussion, uh, workshop item B, discussion regarding new state storm water rules affecting the city of Brownsville as a phase two city and the timeline for submittal of associated municipal separate storm sewer system permit application to the Texas Commission of Environmental Quality. Item A. Who's here for item A? You. Okay. Your bond okay. Um, this is uh, uh, an item that uh, I campaigned on as far as introducing a bond program for streets and drainage, uh, and I think uh, this is something that the whole commission could could uh, unite to, to get done with input from. Uh, the public community, like the Chamber, the BDC, Imagine Brownsville, um, Valley Interfaith, and all that. So the process would be to start it by uh, perhaps uh, thinking of what is it that we really want to do with the bond issue, um, how much debt we want to, we can issue, how much debt we want to issue, uh, forming a committee, uh, what are the priorities. Um, uh, I would like to make uh, my recommendations along with everybody else that this bond issue should be very restricted and subject to board approval by the, I mean, subject to bond approval by the uh, uh, the citizens of Brownsville. Uh, if we commit to uh, pave uh, McDavid Street or uh, West Elizabeth Street that has been neglected for years, that that money be earmarked specifically for those projects and if it's not used for those projects, they cannot be diverted to any other project, even though it may be similar to what we had promised. Because I feel that it's important that if we promise the citizens we're going to pave a certain street, we should pave a certain street. Um, my recommendation, of course, is based on what the voters are all uh, wanting us to do. Is And I've seen in the paper where they feel like we're not paving the streets. Well, we are paving the streets. We were waiting for the budget to be completed in order to start the process of a, of a possible uh, bond program. The budget has already been balanced, and uh, it's my understanding we could issue like $60 million, uh, uh, in debt in uh, uh, 2008 and uh, $34 million in uh, 2011. Um, it would require, this is a rough draft, a uh, three cent um, tax increase in uh, 2008 which in my opinion would be the three cents that we lost when it was, the tax rate was cut before the budget. So it would be recouping that three cents that, that we had in order to, to do those things that the citizens want. I see uh, articles in the paper where they've, some citizens feel like, hey, you're paying too much attention to the dogs and you're not paying attention to the streets. Well, that's not true. We've been working, and uh, the city manager can tell you this, from the day I got elected, this has been a priority, and the city manager can attest that I've been on this ever since, and we've just been waiting for the uh, budget to be completed and all that stuff. This is very rough, very rough, very preliminary, but I think uh, the commission and the mayor and the uh, uh, citizens of Brownsville can come together to see if we can do a pond program uh, this coming year. Uh, having said that, with the input of the commission, um, if they would like to proceed with perhaps appointing a preliminary exploratory committee, exploratory committee, uh, to uh, bring back to the commission to uh, 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 make some recommendations. 
as to what would be the best way to, uh, to proceed this. I have my way of thinking of how we should do it, but I'm sure each commissioner also has their way of thinking, and perhaps uh, through this exploratory committee we can build a consensus uh, to get the job done that the citizens uh, are wanting us to, to get done. Um, this is all subject to the citizens' approval, okay? It's with transparency, it's with accountability, and it's with financial, uh, fiduciary responsibility. So, you know, it's not that uh, uh, um, we're ignoring it. It's just that it takes time to get it done. Now, um, streets are a priority. Drainage is a priority. I would like to see some capital improvements for the zoo, Gladys Border Zoo. I would like to see some capital improvements for public safety. Those are the things that we need to prioritize as to what we can do with the input of the commissioners and the community. So Mayor, it's up, open for discussion, uh, commissioners. Mayor, um, I'd, I'd like to, uh, <coughs> by, if, I, if, you may, if I may, certainly, uh, make, Commissioner make, first, make some couple of comments. You have the floor. I don't think anyone here would, would deny that we need better streets in Bronzeville. And as it was a top choice for many of the residents during the election, you know, streets and Bronzo 2020, uh, the analysis says that streets are a major issue. With that said, though, um, I don't think that's the only issue. <coughs> and if we're going to, if, again, and this is a big if, if the city was to undertake another bond, I don't feel very comfortable with just saying, okay, 55 million for streets, drainage, sidewalks only. If we were going to go to a bond, and as the commission decide, and I think there'd be sh there should be some more additional workshops with the commission, with staff before anything goes forward um, to talk about a library out on the west side so that we're just not focusing on streets and drainage, although it's, it's, it's a top priority, but that we also focus on education and fostering that level of commitment by the city to say we want to have a venues for people to go and our youth to read books and to, and to study and do all the things. Uh, appropriate some money to do the west side library, complete the south moves, and do the upgrades at the main uh, Central Library would be, another, would be another aspect I'd like to see part of this bond program. And lastly, public safety. As public safety is a huge, huge area we, we need plenty of attention, which takes most part of our budget to be considered looking at an EMS substation slash police substation out on the east side, something that has been discussed in the years past. Uh, my commitment to the district and to the city of Browns would be to make sure we look at all avenues, um, before we do anything major of this sort, get a lot of feedback and have a plan set forth to inform the public. And finally, imagine bronze was taking place. There's a lot of strategic planning that is going on right now, and these are some of the discussions I think that, that those groups are having. We need to incorporate Imagine Bronzo into your plan so that we could see something progress. No, let, let me correct this. It's not my plan, Bronzo. it's our plan. Okay. Well, it's going to be our plan. Our plan then should it's be, be our imagine Bronzo to look at the future for the entire city of Bronzo, and that's my and that's just that's just what I think, Mayor. And Commissioner, you, you stated very well. Uh, you're right. We should do all these things, and that's why I'm bringing the issue before us. This is very preliminary, and it's like I said, it would start with an exploratory committee. It's very preliminary, that will come back and give us recommendations. I stated very clearly to the media when I was asked about this. I think Imagine Brownsville has a, 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 a role to play here. So does Valley Interface, so does the Chamber, so does BDC, and so do the citizens at large and the commissioners and the mayor uh, to, to hear first what are the priorities of the community. I have my opinion. I think the streets, drainage, and you have your opinion. You know, everything, everything put together, you know, but let's, let's get – to what we can realistically do, what's practical, and what is a true priority with the limited resources that we have. And then the final test is that the voters have to approve it. You know, we can say all we want, but the voters have to approve it. We have to go back and, and, and get the voters to say, yes, this is a priority to us too. We want our streets paved, or we don't want them. If they don't want it, well, they don't want it. But the point is, let's get started, uh, if, if you all approve. To, to form a preliminary uh, uh, committee by uh, each one of us appointing one person and uh, start identifying uh, uh, how best to go about it, uh, start identifying uh, issues and invite 
imagine Brownsville, by all those people that can be a part of it. It's, it's a community-wide uh, bond program that uh, will have input uh, by everybody who cares to come and voice their needs. I just want to I just want to go on record that this bond program does not does, is not just limited to street drainage and sidewalks. No, sir. I I, I'm just giving you my opinion. You know, I agree with you, I, Commissioner. I feel that's important. Nobody's nobody's limited. Okay. And I, I want to make that very clear. No, I said that very clearly. Nobody's limited. I have my opinion, and so does everybody else. The priorities may be different from what I think, or from Brownsville 2020, but I think we should at least move forward to get in a preliminary committee by uh, having maybe next meeting, uh, put our heads together and coming up with names, one individual each, and, and appoint somebody <laughs> to this exploratory committee to start working to make it happen. If that's, uh, does anybody have any other discussion from the commission here and then I'll open it up to the public. Does anybody have any other discussion, <coughs> comments? Mr. Reese wants to speak. Okay, Mr. Reese. Uh, come up here, Mr. Reese, please. We have to address the government code, sir, and in the government code, it specifies exactly what you have to do. First of all, you have to find out what are, how many streets you want to pave and what it's going to cost. That way you can reach a figure of how much you need to spend, and that money will be used exclusively for that. This is what government code says. I called the American statesman the other day before the election and told him, hey, these guys want $10 billion because they say infrastructure. No, it's not how it goes. This is how we're going to spend it in this infrastructure doing this and this and this. And this is what we're going to cost. And this is the bid because you're so, legally you're supposed to have the bid already before you, you address the bond issue. And now, I have, I have a recommendation because I have here a bond from 1986. Uh, I, I would like to say, uh, ask here, uh, I know he can't answer me, but Mr. Gonzalez, uh, has that bond money pay, been paid for, sir? The, the ones for the street projects we, we addressed in 1986 and in, uh, in, uh, uh, some more money in 1997 for streets? One. I don't know if it's been paid or not. Sometimes I, I, I read that word refund, refund, and I finally deduce that that refund means refinance. You paid only in the interest. You did not pay the principal. So how far in debt are we? Now, if PUB belongs to the city of Browns and decentralized, PUB has issued more than $320 million worth of bonds. We have to address that matter. It's spending infrastructure, okay. Before we issue any more bonds, I recommend to this commission and to the people of Brownsville, I more, more than anything will volunteer my time so that we can redress these past bond issues, find out where the money was spent and how much was spent. In other words, we're going to have to be accountable for the past bond issues before we can issue any more money. Because you know, these streets that are paved, are we going to spend the rest of our lives paying for streets and streets and streets? Something's wrong because the most important thing that I consider in this community is the security of the people of Brownsville, la seguridad. And you know, we're 100 policemen understaffed. We're 100 policemen understaffed. That gentleman is doing a tremendous job, but he's got his hands full. But that should be the main concern of our, the families, the children, not the streets. They can come later. You can always fill out the potholes. But once a child is damaged by drugs, it's going to be a hard time getting back on the right side of the road. This is where we should spend our money in, in the future of tomorrow and the leaders of tomorrow. The children, not one of the candidates in the presidential primaries right now, whatever, in the candidates' forums has addressed the issue of drugs. Okay. <laughs> We're saturated with drugs. We don't know what to do with them. Have we accepted that it's part of our society now? Is that part of our society? Drugs? The candidates have never have not addressed this matter. Mr. Reed, to me, that's what matters. I appreciate your input and I value your your, your comments. But let's focus on the bond issue. Sir, sure, government, sir, sure, this is what I'm talking about. Because if we're going to spend money, let's spend it on security. Let's spend it on the future of the children of this community. Because we are already saturated with drugs. But before we even 
think about going to streets. In fact, I recommend it to you that the mayor of Reynosa was using a special a mixture of cement, and he was placing cement on the streets. And let's find out what he's doing right, because we can also do it, and you fix it for one time, and you don't have to be fixing it every 10 years. Because by the time you try to get out of debt, you're still paying on the principal. Is it, am I correct, Mr. Gonzalez? Okay. So, you know, this is a, we okay. have a lot to study, and, and, uh, but I would but like to, to make an inventory of the past bond issues, and I would be more than glad to offer my time free gratis to form a committee and to select the people that I want. Because in this committee, it's la misma gente, the same people, the same people. They cover their heads and the same people. No, let's get people in there different that can have a voice and that have no personal interest in what's being done. Mr. Reese, thank you very much. And uh, I encourage you to get with Pete Gonzalez to maybe get, go over the past bond issues that were issued. If you would do that, uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, we're just, I'm, I'm just bringing it here to the attention of, of the community. If they want it, they'll have to go out there and support it. If they don't want it, they have to go out and vote against it. But um, like I said, you know, uh, the issues are many, like Commissioner Camarillo pointed out, a library, uh, streets, uh, uh, public safety, drainage, all those things that are important to this community. But it, it will be um, through input from the community. So it's not going to be done just because we say it's going to be done. It's going to be a partnership with the citizens of Brownsville if they want to, if they want us to address the streets, we got to issue debt. We don't have the money. We just have to issue debt. Can we afford to? That's what we have to look at and analyze. If we can't afford to, then we need to let the citizens know we can't afford to. But we have to at least have the dialogue and, and discussion with our community. Uh, Mr. Resendez, please. My name is Alex Resendez. No, no thank you. With all due respect to the commissioners and the mayor. Uh, the newspaper, I'm not, I'm not talking with a microphone, right? Am I? I can hear you. Okay. The, the Brazil Herald states where Mr. Zavaleta says exactly the same thing that Mr. Ruiz uh, quoted just a while ago, uh, saying the way they fix the streets and then they have to refix them over and over. I imagine that it's a uh, some places to save the city money, uh, they're just putting maybe the top of the, of the payment or whatever. Anyway, my suggestion is that we have always had bonds. And like the BISD, the BISD passes a lot of bonds. But the way they pass bonds, they go to the, to the children at the school. They say to the kids, kids, we want you to support this bond, and they pass the bond. I don't know if they built the, 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 the schools that they were supposed to build with this 90 something, 90 something million dollars for schools. I don't know if they've done it or not. I do know one thing, that the taxes in Brownsville are going up all the time, more and more and more. I just gave Mr. Camarillo uh, a phone number of a person that called me. That's just one of the persons that called me. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that, that all the precincts need repairing on the streets. I gave him, a, and he says he's going to call that person. The person is pretty angry because he's got potholes and, and he's got a brand new car, you know, and he's a very well-known person here in Brazil, which I'm not going to name him. Mr. Camarillo is supposed to call him and give him, tell him what he's doing, you know. Uh, the, the, the thing is that uh, when, when you say you want a $55 million bond, we're talking about a bond. And bond, the people have to vote for it. That's what I think. If I'm wrong, you all can That's correct. correct. That's correct. Okay. Uh, then uh, if the people have to vote, I would suggest, Mr. Camarillo said that, that this bond is not only for streets. Okay? If it's not only for streets, we have here $55 million uh, that we have to account for that even my children is going to be paying in the future of Brunswick for taxes, $3 or whatever, for, uh, for the 100 or something on, on, on the properties that, that you are going to raise. Anyway, uh, the thing is that if my kids and the future kids are going to be paying here in Brownsville, well, uh, I've seen a lot of other bonds that they, they don't account for them. Uh, the people that vote, la gente de Brownsville, Texas, they just go and vote. This, this last time that they had those, uh, what do you call those, uh, 
that they just passed, they went in there and voted. They couldn't even reach what they, what, what they were voting for. Los amendments. Mucha gente, they just voted for the amendments. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, I'll vote for it because somebody told them vote yes. But they don't even read them. They were so small. I would appreciate it si ustedes o alguien instruct the, 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 the people of Brownsville, Texas, ¿verdad? Instruyanlos, enséñenles, teach them, tell them, look, we're going to use uh, half of these $55 million dollars for streets or, or uh, uh, one third, one third for, for the dogs or whatever and be able to show to be accountable. Eso es todo, ¿verdad? Porque la gente will vote. I mean, we do need the streets fixed. I agree we need the streets fixed. I mean, I mean, my car has been bumping in unos pozos on Price Street, man. You know, uh, that's pretty bad the way the streets are, and I do agree you all have to do something. Maybe, uh, how, about, how about the impact fee? I mean, why don't you go raising the impact fee or some other way uh, uh, instead of hitting uh, uh, el público o la gente, el voters, with, with taxes and taxes and taxes. That's my opinion, ¿me entiendes? Este, with Thank all due respect, may the Lord bless you all. Thank you, Mr. Resendez. And I want to give you the assurance that we're trying to do as you want us to do. And you have input, just like all the citizens will have input. So you make your concerns known now and also the time when it starts the process. Okay. Thanks. Everybody's going to be involved. Yes, Mr. Dagoberto Barrero. Everybody's going to be involved and want to be involved. Otherwise, don't complain. Honorable Mayor, uh, Honorable Commissioners, and my fellow Americans, Whoa. here we go again. Taxes, taxes, and more taxes. When will this scheme stop? This is all you politicians know on how to raise our taxes. At least six entities are always after us for more taxes every year. What kind of advisors do you have that once they wake up in the morning and think how, when, where to stick it to the taxpayer? Uh, Mr. Mr. Dagoberto Barrera, we're not raising taxes. The citizens, what is it? The citizens will approve whether to raise their tax or not raise their tax depending on what they want or they don't want. It's not this commission is going to raise their taxes. The citizens will be allowed to vote if they want the improvements or don't want the improvements. If we want to be a third world country where we have nothing but potholes and we can't uh, provide relief when it rains to the neighborhoods that need, that have flood problems, then they have nobody to blame but themselves. Because if we don't have the resources and they don't want us to address it, well then, you know, we won't. That's their choice. If they want us to address it based on whatever the outcome is of the bond, I don't know what, the, what it is, what streets we're going to pave, what drainage possible, if any, okay? But it's the citizen's choice, not yours alone and not mine alone. It's the citizens who will decide if they want to raise their taxes by three cents or not. Okay. Mayor, if I may. At um, the end. If I may, Mr. Rutter, sure. just for the record, um, we have employees that are doing a real good job in the Public Works Department, uh, City Engineering, that we're working on, we currently are working on drainage, we're paving streets every day, they're trying to do the best they can. So I just want to go on record as stating that, that we are doing that. And that's very true. People think, don't realize that we are working on it, but money is running out, as this commission, city manager will agree, money is running out for us to continue with those projects that need to be done, so mm -hmm. we can only go to the citizens if they want it, Mr. Barrera. Matt. Doug, could you give me one minute, please? What people need to realize also is that we are on our last year of bond, and we build streets, and the material that we use is based on gas. And the higher the gas price, the higher it is to build a street, the higher it is to fix it. So if gas prices continue at the price that they're at, it's very difficult to build a street at a very good price. The higher the gas price, the higher it is to construct the street. So a million dollars that we could have used two years ago to do one street is a lot less right now because of the, the price currently on gas. Thank you, Dick. Instead, I would like for all of you to use your minds 
to figure out how and what to do with what you have. How to be more efficient at every level. How to improve our safety. How to allocate our tax money to areas of, force pri of first priority. How to look for ways for manpower that is efficient and is, uh, is doing a super job, not a mediocrity type of job. How to lure more industries and developers to build our coffers. We need the Donald Trumps, the Warren Buffets, the Bill Gates, the Carlos Slims, not more poor and more leeches. If you don't want the fence, what you see, what you will be getting is the poor who cross under the bridge. The ones that come across over the bridge, it's okay. The ones that come under the bridge, it's not okay. The ones that under the bridge, it's not okay. The 201, $48 million bonds for streets passed, and $5 million are still left in our coffers for the upgradement of our streets. Today's headline says college graduates are up to their necks in debt. You know who ends up paying for these college graduates' debts? Their parents. Home foreclosures are up and mounting. Property taxes are due now. I already paid mine. Already to get my 3% discount. Now, you all want to get those three cents out of my pocket again. I just had a colonoscopy. My co-payment insurance, I have to pay because I'm not on welfare or Medicaid. There are a lot of new homes development all around us. Thus, new taxes will be coming into your coffers. There are new shopping centers and malls springing up. New taxes will be coming up, will be coming into your coffers soon. Mr. Mayor, Get a conservative mind thinkers, not more tax, tax people, until we all bleed and we will all be in the poorhouse soon. Look in my pocket. Nothing. I just took a four week vacation because I needed one. At 76 years old, my first vacation. I will be sitting home wishing for my welfare check. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Barrera, we want you to enjoy your retirement. We're I'll, glad you're healthy. I'm buying hats. We're, we're glad you're healthy, okay? And we welcome you to come here and give your input, and it's valued. And we welcome you to be part of the process. And if you can persuade the whole city of Brownsville your way, then that's the way we'll go by, okay? Give it a good try. Okay. But we must respect those who disagree with you, okay? Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Barrera. Uh, Commissioner uh, Cisneros and Longoria were saying right now, I was uh, informed yesterday by TV that, you know, Mexico has $75,000 million in the U U.S. Bank. And by not having this money in euros, they lost 55% of their value. Now, we, we, this is very understandable what you say, but, you know, we can progress. You see, we're going to go into the 21st century, and we're going to continue doing the same thing we've done for the past 100 years, building streets and pavement and all this. We should maybe go into a metro system. Maybe we, we can go. Let's, let's get it on, but let's get ahead of the game. Let's get ahead of the game. And, and for example, uh, uh, like uh, Mr. Cisnero was saying, hey, we have these guys over there at, uh, at this... Uh, department that they're doing this and they're doing that well you know what there's a lot of people that that need jobs right now and maybe we can get them for a good price like i i coca said i got so many jobs at so much an hour and let's get this thing rolling let's let's put cement on the streets 
and let's get rid of that. And if we can go into more advanced transportation like a metro or something, we're going to get ahead of the game. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Reese. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Can we um, perhaps um, – uh, I'll bring this back up the next meeting. Perhaps we can uh, uh, start with an exploratory committee with each one of us uh, appointing uh, somebody to that committee, if that's okay with you all. This is not an action item, but uh, it will be on the agenda next week for you all to consider and uh, either go forward or just vote it down. Okay? Let's go to item B, uh, City Secretary. Item B, discussion regarding new state storm water rules affecting the City of Brownsville as a Phase two city and the timeline for submittal of associated municipal separate storm sewer system permit application to the Texas Commission of Environmental Quality. <coughs> Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, I promise to be brief. I know we're behind. Basically, what uh, this issue deals with is non-point source water pollution. An example is uh, water oil mixed with oil here on a, on a parking lot. That's non-point source water pollution. <coughs> a sediment on, uh, on, a, on a curb and gutter is non-point source water pollution, as opposed to point source that already have permits by the state. This uh, issue has been lying dormant for about four years. Some of the commissioners were here at my previous workshops regarding this issue. And back in 2003, the cities were scheduled to uh, come up with a, a permit regarding the uh, release of stormwater to receiving bodies. The phase two phrase comes from the fact that in 1990, all cities that were, had a population of 100,000 or more were required to have that permit on, on record. We, uh, the city of Brownsville is a phase two city, had uh, to go ahead and, and uh, abide by those uh, rules uh, in 2003. However, due to litigation, it got stalled for the last four years. And now uh, they published the uh, permit back in, uh, in uh, August the 11th, and uh, they gave us six months to comply with, uh, with said permit and, and submittal of the notice of intent to release water into receiving bodies, and that's where we are. The uh, clock is ticking. And this is just some history. I'll just pass by that. It's part of the Clean Waters Act. Uh, more of the same. I explained that right now. This is the form itself. If you've uh, been involved with construction sites, uh, permits, this is familiar to you. Uh, basically, it's the same issue. It's, I don't know if you can see, but basically, it's like $100 is uh, the uh, Fee permit, it's not a big issue. However, if you go on to the next page, you can't see it, but on item, item four, it calls for a stormwater management plan. And that is kind of the fly in the ointment regarding the issue. You've got to come up with a plan regarding uh, six, this is your receiving body, your Isacas, your rivers, uh, San Martin Lake, Cameron County drainage districts, they're all receiving water. You've got, to deal with, you've got to come up with a stormwater management plan that deals with the six issues at hand, or the minimum control measures, which are public education and outreach, public involvement and participation, illicit discharge, detection and elimination, construction site, uh, uh, control of runoff, post-construction site control, pollution prevention, good housekeeping, uh, things of that nature, regarding uh, uh, municipal operations. Uh, street street sweeping and things like that, fleet maintenance. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> this is just basically what we're talking about. Illicit discharge, obviously this would call for not only code enforcement, but uh, like a citizen hotline regarding... Where is that at? Do you know? I'm not sure. This is, might be around uh, the southmost area over there by off by the Pronto. I'm not sure where that that other one is. I don't think that's within can, the city. Can there. we run an education program on Channel 12 to deal with that? Sure. That will be part of the, uh, the program that we have to put together. And the reason I, well, a good reason to bring this forward is that we're going to have to work with several departments, engineering, public works, obviously, and MIS and our, our education uh, elements. Construction sites, uh, once again, we've got to be, uh, we already do site reviews, so a lot of those issues a lot of these issues are already in-house, we're already doing them. We have to take inventory of what we're doing and present that as part of the package and augment it as, as needed. Uh, detention ponds here, you obviously want to 
stop the silt before it reaches your, your receiving bodies. Fleet maintenance also, once again, this, is, uh, this would re involve uh, street sweepers and other uh, municipal activities. That's, a, uh, that's the uh, stormwater management plan. Uh, one of the issues or the benefits that came out of this litigious uh, period that we had in the last four years is the seventh control measure, which allows the city to get one permit for all their construction sites. Instead of going through that one form for every separate construction issue, we can put them under the um, one umbrella, the umbrella of the city for all whatever construction out, uh, projects we may have in hand. So that was one good benefit of that. Uh, once again, part of the plan, the key ele elements are the timeline and the scheduling, uh, a system map where our waters are, are going or where our outfalls are going into the receiving bodies. We may have co-permittees like the Cameron County Drainage District, the university, uh, maybe the PID, uh, the, uh, the Hudson Development Site. So we've got to work with them. We, ha we have to create a stormwater ordinance. And the reason I, I mentioned this, at the end of the day of the five-year period for this initial phase, we, we need to have a stormwater uh, ordinance whereby we ourselves will become responsible if there's a illicit discharge and we haven't done anything, then the state can come to us and say, well, you've got a, an ordinance in place. Why aren't you, you know, enforcing it? And we could be, we could be uh, in trouble if we don't do that. So we want to do that, but obviously we probably want to wait till for a while. We, once again, uh, we have five years to implement the project in full or the program in full. Uh, this is an unfunded mandate, and unfortunately this mandate does cost money. The phase one cities like Laredo have implemented uh, service fees. Uh, right, they started with 50 cents, now they're up to, to a $4.50 four per meter. Uh, some of the, this money takes care of um, street sweeping and other activities. Uh, we have options that we may, we'll come back and present to the commission later. Uh, stormwater fee is one. You don't want to, well, if you do utility fee, then you have to go before the, the voters and, and pass that. Or we could cost share with some of our co permittees. Obviously, we're looking for ideas to cut the price down. It's an unfunded mandate, but in the end, you pay one way or the other. So if we can take care of this and, and come up with an effective program, we'll, we'll enhance our drainage, uh, limit our flooding, uh, and contamination of surface water, and obviously uh, all associated costs will be diminished if we come up with an effective program. And at the end, of course, we want clean surface water for us to enjoy and, and drink. <laughs> Our water comes from, uh, from the river. All of it comes from the river. We have to take care of it. The Rosacas are still kind of our backup reservoir. So uh, whatever we do to protect that is obviously in our own benefit, not only for now, but for future development. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Let's go to the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of I allegiance pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one and indivisible. Reverend uh, Greg Fish will lead us in a word of prayer. <clears throat> Welcome to your house, city chambers. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord God, I commit now to you, the mayor, the commissioners, the public, and all those on tonight's agenda. And I pray that ideas could be generated and disagreements uh, could be resolved, that decisions could be made that would benefit this city. Above all, I just ask that you would be glorified through all that is said and done in this meeting. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. <coughs> we will go to the comment period. Uh, the first speaker is Mr. Barrera. You already gave you two cents worth? Okay. <laughs> uh, item two. Uh, Mr. Mr. Oh. <laughs> I want three cents. <laughs> I want three cents. You want three cents. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Reese, you want to comment? Uh, 
Good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. I would like to invite all of the citizens that are watching TV right now to come and join you, Mayor, and the efforts of this commission. Because you know, you have good plans. But if the people do not support us, if the people do not stand behind us, we're getting nowhere. But they have to also sense that they have a responsibility to the community, you know. And, and if they're going to just be slacking and slacking, you know, like the area that Mr. Jose just showed, well, let's have some working parties here. We have a lot of retired people that, that are professional uh, uh, officers that pr probably assist uh, Mr. Garcia with some of his duties from all, all the branches of, uh, of the federal government. What are they doing there at home just drinking beer and eating peanuts? They ought to come out and help Mr. Garcia and help the community that gave so much to them so that, that we can have more supervision of the streets and things to that effect. So, you know, Brownsville is about everybody that's here, legal or illegal. It doesn't make a difference because the guys that are here, illegal, they work, they do something for the community, and, and we have to work as a team. But I would like for you to take it one step further, one step further, Mayor, Paving the streets, it's okay. Let's get ahead of the game. Let's introduce modern technology. This is what we need. Because if we're going to stay with the buses rolling, and las llantas, y yes, because this, other cities, you know, they have planned, yeah. like Paris, like New York, like Boston, like Monterrey, Mexico City. You know, they weren't that big when they started, but they needed to do something to get the people from one place to the other. And maybe we cannot just continue besides paving roads and fixing roads to continue building roads. We have to get away from that. We have to start some mass transportation. This is what we need, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Reese. Mr. Alex Resendez, please. Again, Alex Resendez. Uh, <clears throat> this time I want to give thanks uh, to the commissioner that fixed my streets out there. I saw them working very hard. They did a wonderful job over there uh, close to the Valley Regional Hospital. Todas esas calles allá, este, winds or uh, woods and El all over here, El Chaparral, all those streets out there, you know, Las Palomas, este, uh, all that area, I, I went over there and they did a wonderful job. For the people that are over there, they all know me because I do help the politicians and I get involved. And they said, Mr. Resendez, let them know that they've done a good job, you know. So, Mr. Cisneros, I don't know who else was involved, but I do want to congratulate the workers from the city, you know. Uh, Ayala, or I don't know who they are. All the public <coughs> works. Public works. Public works, you know. Uh, I really want to congratulate them. Nobody has congratulated them, uh, I, but, but I have had phone calls and telling me, you know, don't be too rough with those guys. They've they, they done a good job. I don't know how much money you all spent. Uh, I saw some streets that you all really made a ditch and, and really fixed them from the bottom, you know. So I want to congratulate you, Mayor, and, and, and the Commissioner for, the, for those streets, you know. I'm, I don't know about the rest of them, you know. I had some complaints and and they told me over there where Mr. Camarillo said they still have to work on some streets. I talked to Mr. Camarillo, he says, they're doing it. They're doing it, you know. If you all are going to do the streets, and if you all are going to do something good with this money, I'm 100% for you all, you know. <coughs> but when money gets lost, and nobody knows para donde se va, ¿me entiendes? That is terrible. Uh, I, I'm going to say something that does not pertain to this. In los tiempos de Rey Ramón, que he was the county judge, he said, I'm going to feed the poor Mexicans down here. And he did. He was coming with the OEO program, and he brought a lot of cheese, you know, cheese from the government, OEO program. And he was feeding all the Mexicans, but then all the cheese got lost, and they were selling it across the border. It came out in the Bra Brownsville Herald, you know. So if they do that with cheese, what are they going to do with $55 million? <laughs> okay? Well, mucho cuidado, este, may la gente de Brownsville, I mean, vote for you all, or I don't know what you all are going to do, pero it's a lot of money. And, and if he says that you're going to distribute it in, in different places, you know, besides streets, well, you all better be accountable. I mean, you all might not even be here when, when people want to know what happened. Yeah. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Vez, the Lord bless you all. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mr. And we're still working. Sue Alton, please. Mayor and Commissioners, 
My name is Sue Alton, and I'm the on the advisory board for the uh, city animal shelter here in Brownsville. And I read on the website for the city that the mayor was going to be discussing or proposing enlarging our animal shelter. And as a member on the board there, I have some, some questions and some concerns about that. And I thought, well, this would probably be the appropriate place to bring them up. First of all, um, one of the things that I've read in the paper is that our shelter here in town is being compared to the shelter in... Uh, Edinburgh, McAllen area, and that is a countywide shelter. It's servicing the whole county of Hidalgo, as opposed to us. We, we service just the Brownsville area, so they get funding that comes in that we're, you know, that we don't currently have access to. Second thing that I'm concerned about, and I know you're probably tired of hearing it, but how are we going to pay for it? That's a big concern to me, and we have discussed that in our um, meetings uh, at the shelter with the, the, the board, <coughs> and we're looking at funding that comes from somewhere outside of Brownsville. Um, I just think when we have potholes that are big enough for a Rottweiler to fall in, that we need to, you know, put our priorities in, in order. And as much as I would like to expand our shelter and have more holding room, uh, because I am concerned, too, about the, the amount of animals that we kill here in town, I, I just think that maybe our priority is, is needs to be to the city as a whole. The third thing that I'm concerned about is our shelter that we have now, as I understand it, and I'm out there on a fairly regular basis, is not currently fully staffed. So if we're not staffing our shelter at the size that we are now, if we're not able to get the people in there that we need now, how are we going to do it for a much larger shelter? That's an issue. You have live animals out there. They have to be taken care of. And we've seen what happens if you do not have the right structure in place before you start loading animals into some kind of a facility. It can be very dangerous. Um, one other thing that I would like to bring up is we have the opportunity to make a real difference in Brownsville right now. We finally have a spay-neuter clinic. That's the good news. The bad news is it's not equipped. And as long as that thing is not equipped, the animals that are out there breeding, and believe me, they are not necessarily pets. As much as we like to, you know, give them that name, they are not an animal someone loves. They are an animal that's neglected, that's been left out on the street. And those animals are breeding, and until we get that spay-neuter clinic completely outfitted so that vet can start working on these animals, we'll never cut the, an the number down that we're killing. It's just not going to happen, and that needs to be a priority. Um, You're speaking individually, right? Not as a group. I'm I'm a board okay. member okay. for the city okay. shelter. Okay. Yeah, and that's what I'm speaking about. I mean, that's why I have these concerns. Um, the spay neuter clinic, board like board. I say, that's a real issue. And I don't know if you have any questions from me or anything else. I would we, tell you. We our can't we can't interact with you during the comment period. Oh, okay. Well, I, I just noticed from before you had, so I, I didn't know. Sorry. Um, but I will tell you that our board, we do discuss this, and we are looking ahead. When the, when the shelter was designed, it's designed for expansion. You can expand that shelter, but you have to do it when we're ready and when we can handle it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Alton. Ms. Uh, Haas, uh, no, Charles Haas, I'm sorry. Two items. Uh, one, I'm sure that everybody remembers that Daimler Chrysler used to be one company and Chrysler got sold off. Well, the corporation that bought Chrysler uh, opened up, uh, also owns other businesses, and they're having a grand opening of one of their businesses. And some of the board members from the, that corporation that owns Chrysler are going to be in Brownsville on Thursday. And I thought maybe some city people would like to go over and encourage these people to do more business in Brownsville. That was one thing. I have invitations uh, if anybody would like any. Secondly, on the uh, item regarding the uh, paid freelance grant writers, uh, that is something that's kind of dear to me because I ran across a federal grant that Brownsville is highly qualified for 
And I happen to know that there's nobody in the Brownsville City staff who's capable of applying properly for that grant. And I would hate to see this money just go by. I've, I've seen all kinds of grant money. It's like a river of it just floating by because nobody is available to write for it. So when you get to that item, and if you need to ask me any questions about it, because that particular grant I'm intimately familiar with, I'll be in the audience, and I'm willing to help you in your decisions or deliberations. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Okay, we have one more. Oh, that's it, Mr. Elton. Okay. Can I, can I say something real quick? Uh, yes. Um, I just, the reason why I'm dressed like this is because this Saturday is our first annual City of Brownsville Youth Tackle Football Championship. Uh, the kids have done excellent this whole season. We brought in 10 teams, and we're down to two teams now. And uh, parents, I want to thank them for being involved with their kids. We had a good turnout this season. Hopefully next year um, it will be even better. I want to thank all the commissioners here and the mayor for supporting this uh, project that, that I brought to the table. And um, I want to thank Robert Tyler, the commissioner of the Football League, for doing an outstanding job with these kids, with these referees, with these parents, because everybody knows youth sports can get crazy sometimes. I want to thank the 4B for helping us out to get this started, Delina Barrera. Parks and Rec, Skip Keller, you've done an excellent job with the fields and, and with promoting your staff, promoting this uh, youth football tackle league. <coughs> um, BISD athletic department have also been more engaged than ever. Next year they're going to help us out with using, we use their fields this year. I don't know if people knew that. We want to go into more of a partnership with them next year until we can provide better parks and better places for these kids to play these uh, um, uh, these games. Anyway, Saturday, 2 p.m., we got the Honorable Senator Eddie Lucio who's going to come out and do the coin toss. It's going to be at Sam Stadium. These kids are going to be bust there. You know, we're, we're, we're going all out for these kids. They're going to be bust to the stadium. It's going to be professionally done. We're going to have uh, professional referees. Uh, they're going to be playing on artificial grass. Just a little, I mean, even if I was that age playing on something like that, it, it just sparks uh, enthusiasm. It gets kids motivated. And if we as parents and our community are, are able to support these kids, you know, I think things will get better and better each year. So uh, I, I'm a big advocate of youth sports, and um, I encourage my fellow commissioners, my mayor, and all you out there to please go by 2 o'clock p.m. and see a great game. I think it's the Jaguars versus the Falcons. And these kids have played their hearts out all year. And, and we just like to show uh, the kids that the, the community of Brownsville is behind them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank um, you, too, Charlie Gabler. <laughs> five seconds left for three minutes. Oh, you're going to cut me off? Okay. Um, uh, we'll give a very brief uh, mayor's report. Um, there's a lot of good things happening in our community in spite of sometimes you see a lot of negative in the press, uh, things that are happening that people are not even aware of. Uh, we are moving forward. We are making progress. Um, my job is to bring the issues before you, have them debated, and then uh, uh, hopefully have a positive outcome. <coughs> You've seen that with the budget. You saw that with the cultural funding. Um, and you know now you're looking at the bond program, and uh, there's so many good things that are that are happening in our community, and we are moving forward in spite of sometimes people uh, feel like we're not doing quick enough. Like for instance, um, uh, read letters in the uh, editorial, like Mr. Benson, you know, uh, referring to the streets. We are paving s streets. We are. It is a priority, but uh, it takes time, uh, and some people don't know what we're doing. Um, the golf tournament was a huge success. I mean, uh, I look forward to doing it two days next year and raising eighty thousand uh, dollars. We raised, uh, we have pledged forty thousand. I think we collected close to thirty-five thousand, thirty-five thousand, and that was just uh, extremely awesome. Um, my next project as mayor will be to, and I'm already getting sponsors for that, is to build a 180-foot flagpole uh, with a mega flag and, and install it. Uh, along the expressway and dedicated to the veterans. 
Um, hopefully FAA will approve to where you can put an antenna up there and that funding that it collects, it generates, the money will be donated to the, to the veterans. Uh, that'll be another positive project that uh, um, I will get sponsors for to make happen. Um, as mayor, uh, I have the opportunity to uh, be part and do some of these things that will make a positive impact on our community and I hope to, to do many more projects similar to that. Uh, right now, the one that, um, that uh, really concerns me and I think uh, has touched the hearts of many, I ask that uh, pictures be put on Channel 12 about what's happening in Tabasco. It's a, a disaster there in Mexico that is uh, similar to the one we had here in the United States in Louisiana, uh, Katrina. There's a lot of people that are uh, affected, I mean, tremendously, and they need assistance from us. And based on that, I went to HEB and I went to Walmart, I went to Loera uh, Trucking, I went to Valley Trucking, I went to uh, the Red Cross in Mexico, met with them, uh, met with the Mexican consulate, talked to the Mayor Matamoros, and, and key people as to how we could help. And uh, I, uh, I talked with the, uh, the uh, fire chief who is collecting right now dry goods to send to uh, uh, Tabasco. Uh, but uh, come to find out that the Red Cross in Mexico has a different way of doing things. And based on that, uh, um, I got uh, uh, familiar with, with what they're really needing. And uh, let me show you what, what we can do as a community. Now, hopefully, the community will get involved and, and uh, uh, send a, a lot of these things to, to, to Tabasco by taking it to the fire station. If people will go to Walmart and HEB or take it upon themselves, I'm going to show you a box right now. What the Red Cross is asking is very specific. It's a 16 by 12 by 12 box, which you can get at U-Haul. First National Bank is making 1,000 boxes available free for those who don't want them, okay? And they'll be provided at HEB and Walmart. And if you go there, there's a, a particular list that uh, the Red Cross from Mexico wants you to, to package in this box. That way they can get the box and give it to a family. Right now, food is a, a primary concern, uh, and I'm going to give you the list. Or you can go by HEB and Walmart, and they will help you. They're asking for bottled water, a liter of it, uh, new blankets, no clothes, tuna in a can, sardines, Vienna, Vienna sausage, chiles, spam, all in a can, salt, sugar, coffee, instant, uh, chicken flavor cubes, consomme, beans in a can, one liter cooking oil, cookies, powdered milk, 500 grams, chocolate powder, diapers, fruits, vegetables, baby formula, toilet paper, peanut butter, jelly, bread, jam, dry goods that are not perishable, cans that don't require a can opener because people don't have can openers. You want to make it easy for them. But Walmart and HEB has agreed to help you. And if you put everything in this box, Valley Trucking or Loera is willing to help us get these goods to Matamoros or Reynosa where they will be airlifted to Tabasco. What goes in the box costs about $30 and one cent. That's really very little. I think we can all afford one box. If we make it an effort to go to HEB, Walmart, or do it yourself, we're going to post this on the website. Instead of taking goods and just dump them in there at the, uh, at the fire stations, it would be preferable if you would do this. Go pick up a box or have HEB and Walmart provide you the box and get, the, get them to help you with the list. Pay $30, then take the box to uh, uh, the fire station who then will be picked up and sent to, uh, to Matamoros or Reynosa to be airlifted over there. So with that, um, I encourage everybody to be a part of this. Uh, First National Bank has donated 1,000 boxes. Um, Mr. Um, um, David Aguilar at HEB assisted me. 
uh, Greg Woods there at HEB on Boca Chica, there in front of Lone Star Bank where the uh, uh, Lubis is, and Javier Liendo, Javier Liendo is also part of this. At Walmart, it's Bob Rousey. Uh, just ask for management if you have any problem, and they will assist you. We're asking the banks and, and the uh, uh, companies who want to participate to either donate boxes or get the, you know, uh, provide money also. At Wells Fargo Bank, there's an account. You can deposit money directly if you want to deposit money, but they are in need of food. The Red Cross of Mexico said they need food, and we need to get them food. With that said, uh, hopefully you keep, help us get the message out through your churches, through the people you come in contact, the newspaper, the media. Uh, keep bringing it up. Keep bringing it up. It's going to be on Channel 12, and we're going to keep running it and running it and running it, and hopefully we'll have a, a, a citywide effort to get these boxes to Tabasco to the uh, victims of the uh, disaster over there. With that said, I want to thank everybody. Only, you know, God knows what's in my heart. I'll gladly buy the box. Whatever happens afterwards, I'll leave it in his hands to judge. But I have assurances, okay, from the Red Cross that will not happen. This is being handled by the Red Cross themselves. And the Red Cross is, has a pretty good reputation, okay? We're not giving it, this not independent to where somebody's doing it individually or anything like that. This is a Red Cross designed to do that. Now, if you have any concerns, you don't want to do it, you don't want to risk your $30, well, don't do it. I would rather risk the $30 and hope that it gets there and know that I did a good thing to help a family who perhaps doesn't have something to eat. Well, uh, let me tell you, I did contact the Red Cross here, and I met with somebody here. They referred me to the Red Cross in Mexico, so I, I, I went to Mexico because that's where they referred me to. Uh, I'm limited as to what I can do. I'm, I don't do this for a living. I'm just trying to facilitate it and provide the best guidance for the community to help. Like you said, Mexico responded to our need in Louisiana, and I think we should do the same. And I'm going to ask uh, whether it's possible or not. I want to ask our Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison to consider maybe helping out with uh, maybe transporting uh, or collecting goods or some uh, on a statewide level uh, since she is a federal senator representing the state of Texas. Uh, that's all I can do. But as locally as your mayor, uh, I've initiated this. Hopefully the community will participate. It's only $30 in one sense, más o menos, okay? And I know we spend more than that, you know. And uh, it'd be a worthy cause to contribute to and help uh, the suffering and help the needy, help those people that really, really have a, a need right now. And it's very well outlined, it, from diapers to cooking oil to coffee to dry goods. It's well outlined. So go to HEB, go to Walmart, and, you know, fork out $30.01 or muscle metals, whatever it is, and do it in good faith, and, and hopefully, you know, everything will go well. Okay? Thank you very much. Um, number three, recycling uh, report from the volunteer. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Mayor and Honorable Commissioners, um, I'm here today as the Mayor's Ecological Development Volunteer Advisor to give a brief description of the initiatives that have taken place for the benefit of the City of Brownsville. The City of Brownsville is currently looking at RFPs of companies that are willing to service and recover recyclable materials so as to not pose any unnecessary burden to the landfills. 
This cooperative effort between the City of Brownsville and a private company will help to offset the expense involved in recycling. As it stands, the BFI, a private company, in, uh, invoices the City approximately $5,600 for the cost involved for recycling plastic, paper, cardboard, metal, and aluminum cans at the Elizabeth Street location downtown. They are also given in-kind paid utilities for their services and the use of City bins and equipment for this purpose. With this in mind, we are proposing to accelerate these efforts by placing 12 bins in strategic areas of the city to include churches, private property, city property, in order to best serve the city as a whole. I have also spoken to BISD administration and curriculum developers to promote, educate, and market the recycling efforts throughout the elementary school system. I have proposed the Oregon Waste Reduction Curriculum with an emphasis on science and math utilization. Both the Superintendent Gonzalez and the Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Springston, have been overwhelmingly positive our goal is to provide a balanced look at solid weight I issues and to teach students how to investigate, interpret, analyze, and strengthen their problem-solving skills utilizing this curriculum. With this in mind, I, as a PTA president for a DC Elementary, a BISD school, wrote a Lowe's grant for an outdoor classroom. Um, it is a proposed general plan for the conservation of valley oak trees. It is a concept that can be easily emulated by the beautification committee for other grants such as the Home Depot grant, which has already been initiated at the mayor's request. Currently, BISD, along with the City of Brownsville, have health and safety codes that mandate that they also seek ways to implement a recycling and waste reduction program. Although there are some measures in place, we have gained approval to start recycling efforts at Ortiz Elementary, Stillman Middle School, and Pace High School. This is an effort to enhance any pre-existing efforts and to integrate new ones with the help of the student body, principals, and community. ESD Recycling has agreed to help with the procedures for collecting and storing recyclable materials at these particular locations. We are a growing city and education is paramount to ensure our recycling efforts success. It is easy to see how science is a medium to stimulate the children on how we affect our environment and how our environment affects us. We are hopeful that the city's Channel 12, BISD newsletters and public service announcements will help promote the proposed recycling locations City employees will be essential in these recycling efforts as well to ensure its implementation into the mainstream. I welcome your suggestions and am encouraged at both the city and by BISD's openness. Any Thank questions? you, Dr. Garcia. Recycling uh, must be a priority. Uh, 80, 90 percent of what's put in the landfill can be recycled. And I want to thank you. And I want to also thank uh, Commissioner Camarillo for taking an interest in getting involved. We met uh, with people, and, and uh, I think this, this is what citizens want, and we need to provide it, make it easy to recycle and educate people to make it happen. Brownsville needs to be a green city, yes. and with the help of people like yourself and the commission here, I know we can achieve that goal, and I look forward to working with you. Uh, with the grants that will enhance that, we're talking about a $75,000 grant that I mean, it's there just for the taking, providing we follow the process and the $5,000 grant, which can only benefit our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, item four. I item four. Thank you. Consent agenda items A through I. Okay, uh, A, <coughs> City Secretary. Item A, approval of the minutes of the yes. special meeting of October 30th, 2007. Yeah, but let me, let me take you to page uh, four. Okay. Okay, item number six. It says clarify the seven members to the kayak committee, one appointment by each by each member of the city commission. Note that Mayor Omada abstained on Mrs. Lee and Greer's appointment to the kayak. But also it should be noted if you go back to the uh, to the tape that I was denied my appointment. Okay. Of yourself? Myself. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I was denied. I was allowed, according to the rules established, uh, everyone was going to make one appointment. Okay. When it came to my appointment, which I was appointed myself, I was denied that appointment. Okay. That, that's fine. I just want the minister to reflect, uh, reflect accurately what took place. That's all. This is not going to change anything, but the minister needs to reflect that. Uh, page 8. Uh, where it says Commissioner Leonel T. Garza moved to Dr. Salete, Joe Salete be reappointed to the Brownsville Public Utilities Board. Somewhere, and if you go back to the tape, I stressed that Dr. Saletas was a four-year appointment. In fact, I mentioned that those that did not uh, participate in that appointment, 
the first time when he was appointed um, was uh, Camarillo, uh, Commissioner Camarillo, Cisneros, and Commissioner Turian abstained and should not be uh, a part of the discussion here. And, uh, and, I, and I said that my appointment was for four years, and then Commissioner um, Rick Longoria said, no, that his tent was not for four years, although uh, Commissioner uh, Atkinson and Commissioner Leo Garza reaffirmed that it was for four years. But just look at the tape and make those uh, changes. Basically, that's it. And based on that, I will uh, more, more than happy entertain a motion to uh, approve all the items subject to those changes. If this if it's the wishes of the commission. What do you approve? To approve all the consent items, um, A through I. I. So basically, all you're asking for is for verbatim on the minutes. You I'm, want verbatim. I, no, I want those. I'm asking that those points be inserted into the minutes. Verbatim. Well, the only concern I have is that when we talked about the appointments on the uh, the kayak, all appointments were subject to approval by the city commission, which, based on your reading here, by saying that we somehow didn't allow you on the kayak, I mean, that had to be approved, and that, that's simply the way it happened. There was no each commissioner gets an appointment no, regardless. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not opening up the debate. Just go back to the tape. Well, and I understand and that, you, and that's and why I'm not, I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm trying to simply clarify that the appointment would have been subject to approval, and that's not in the minutes, so I guess we need, if we're going to be verbatim on everything, then we have to be hyper-technical and come back and put down on here that it's subject to approval by each of the city commissioners is what you're asking for. No, I, I clearly stated there, if you look at the tape, that I said, look, I was, I was supposedly, according to the rules, allowed one appointment, and I'm being denied that appointment. I said that, and if you look at the tape, that's what I said. Okay, so then are you saying that we are not supposed to approve each commissioner's appointment? No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not discussing the issue. I'm just telling you what needs to be reported on the minutes, what I stated. The minutes reflect what took place. It's, it's a historical document of That's what exactly took place. That's exactly why I'm asking that question, so because it is a not, historical not, document. I'm not going to debate or discuss the issue. All I'm asking her is to record the minutes as discussed. That's all. Well, then I'd like to have the minutes to clarify as well that each appointment has to be verified or affirmed by the city commission. We can't, we can't go back and do that. You need to, well, if, he, if, he said that, if he said that included in there, uh, um, city secretary, but you cannot add more than what was said or, t you know, that it's a historical well, document, okay? You're asking us to affirm the minutes, and based on this, I would move to not affirm them if that is the, the catch-all that you're implying. Okay, well, then you have a, a motion and a second by Commissioner Longoria not to affirm these minutes, okay? Not to affirm the changes that you were implying. Not to affirm the changes? To affirm the changes. I don't think, I don't think that's, that's subject to debate. That's, that, well, you brought this, them up. No, that's the, no, the, your, 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 the minutes here are supposed to reflect what took place and what was said. The minutes reflect said. what they reflect. You want verbatim included. Then I'm not saying verbatim. I'm saying to include my comments that my <coughs> appointment was denied. Okay, I was not allowed to make my appointment. I made those comments very clear. So if you don't want to, if you don't want to have the historical document reflect, you're allowed an okay. appointment, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second, Commissioner. We're, we're being petty here. Well, you want to be petty? Well, then be petty. We have a approve. motion. You have a second by approve Commissioner Longoria to approve second, the minutes as is. I'll second his. Who's? The way, the way it is, on there. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Did you get that? Yeah. You got it. Okay. So on these minutes, be sure to include what I'm saying here, okay? <laughs> Today's minutes, okay? Okay. Let's go to uh, item five. I come out the same anyway. All right. You don't know what you're doing. Item speed through. Oh, I'm sorry. Items Item three. B through I. B through I. B through I. We have a motion, items B through I, to approve. Second. Second by Commissioner uh, Atkinson. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item five, please. Okay. Item five. 
consideration and action on the possibility of removing a Brownsville Citizens Advisory Board member and appointing a replacement. Is this on the... Um, this, is, uh, this is my appointment here. Your request. Um, that was one of your items, sir? Yes. Can I, can I uh, put this one for the next meeting? Would you, would you table this for me to the next meeting, please? Is there a motion to table? Uh, motion to table. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, the next one, please. Uh, item six is reconsideration and action on the possibility of removing an airport advisory board member and appointing a replacement. That's by Commissioner Lunel Tigar. He's not here. Could we have a motion to table, table that too? Well, there's there's uh, some other appointments that are coming up. Well, yeah, but Mr. Uh, to uh, this is a to particular item that um, Commissioner Garza needed to address. Yeah, table. but we can still we can what still because we voted on it last week to put Ruben Rodriguez, right? Yes, but this is a reconsideration mm -hmm. on something that was previously done. So if we're going to be doing at airport advisories, we can put it at the next meeting for a consideration and action. As opposed I'd to courtesy to Mr. Garza, would you mind table tabling this? Second. Did you make a motion to table, Mr. Camarillo, Mr. and Aye. seconded by Mr. Atkinson. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Aye. Item 7. Item 7, consideration and action on the possibility of removing a Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee member or members and appointing replacement or replacements. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Nice hat. <laughs> um, we have a gentleman that was on the park board who was hired by the city as our youth activities uh, coordinator. So we need to replace him. And it also, I mean, I, I'll put this on because I attended the last meeting and there's a couple of people that I've missed two years worth. And to me, if, you know, if we're going to hold ourselves accountable for coming to these meetings, we expect people to be going to those meetings because if Brownsville is going to flourish, especially in the Parks Department. If we want uh, um, to move forward there, these people need to come to these meetings. And I got a consensus from some of these commissioners, and I'm going to make these, these uh, changes. And based on y'all's approval, uh, I'd like to make a couple of changes. Uh, I know Commissioner Cisneros, was, before he left, he had to leave because his daughter got in a wreck. But he wanted to appoint Rico Holloway to replace Tony Savannah. Uh, one of my, Ernie Hernandez had an appointment, uh, had John Ch Patriaca. He hadn't been in a meeting in two years. So there, we're enforcing absences over there. Uh, yours is Garcia, but she's still there. And uh, Longoria had uh, Nora. She's still on there. If, if you need to talk to them and see where they are with absences. And then, the, the, and then Patriaca is being replaced by Mike Jones. He's the owner of uh, Ben's Liquor. And uh, last but not least, uh, Sergio Zarate would, would, would be replacing Renee Torres. So if I can get that approval or a second, I'd, I'd, we need to move this board forward and we need these people to show up. Please. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Atkinson, second by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Did you get the names? Okay. I'd like to go to item five. I didn't realize I have the resignation letter here. Uh, I'd like to go back to item five and uh, reconsider it. Okay, we'll reread item five. Yes. Consideration and action on the possibility of removing a Brownsville Citizens Advisory Committee board member and appointing a replacement. Okay, I got uh, the, um, the uh, resignation, I didn't realize I had it here, of Rosa Art, who I appointed, uh, I think a couple of meetings ago. Uh, she tells me due to family situation, I will be unable to serve on the Citizens Advisory Committee. Based on that, uh, I would like to f appoint Father Jerry Frank, who's here in the audience. Uh, Father Jerry, you can serve. Sure. Uh, Certainly. Come on. Homeless coordinator for the city of Brunswick. And uh, regarding to this appointment, uh, there might be a conflict of interest. Uh, based on what? According to federal regulations, 24. Oh, based on what? Oh, no, 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 I got his resignation. I got Father Jerry's resignation right here. Okay, so he's willing to uh, resign from that other board. Uh, Mayor, he, he's a member of the Public Housing Authority Board, 
We have a contract with the Brownsville Housing Authority and the, break, and the CFR, 24 CFR is very specific uh, regarding the uh, conflict of interest regarding members <coughs> that are currently receiving funding, agencies that are currently receiving funding either home or CDPG and we have a, a one year contract with the Housing Authority on the housing and we have a 20 year contract on uh, a tax credit project and that's funded with home money. So. So that's why we bring this to you. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't know it was uh, uh, this person, but uh, the regulations is very clear. Yeah, but I think uh, Father Jerry is willing to resign, right, Father Jerry? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Is that the case, then it's okay. Yeah. Okay, we have his resignation from the Brownsville Housing Authority, so I'd like to... Well, let me ask you something. On this board, is he going to be able to... to BCI, BCAC is is um, funds that go toward uh, nonprofits, right? Nonprofits and infrastructure projects as well. Now, is Viva going to be coming up and asking for 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 stuff? I I just want to know. Abstain. <coughs> I have his resignation here. Okay, so based on that, uh, the conflict has been. Uh, About a second. Sure. Vida did get funded from CWG funding this year. I believe it's thirty-five thousand. That's great. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so since there's uh, uh, no conflict, I would like to appoint Father Jerry. And uh, this is the mayor's appointment, is that right, uh, city, city attorney? I believe in the past, Mayor, that the commission has voted on the uh, com citizen, citizen's advisory. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, make a motion to, approve, uh, to um, appoint Father Jerry. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a second by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Okay, we have two nays and two ayes. And how do you abstain? How do you, how do you I'm going to. Pardon me? Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we have three ayes, uh, City Secretary, Commissioner Camarillo, Commissioner Atkinson, and uh, the Mayor, and two nays, Commissioner Rick Longoria and Commissioner uh, Troiani. Okay? Thank you. You need a four vote? No. This is not an ordinance or no. a resolution. So we have a quorum right now. Thank you so much. Okay, let's move on to the next item. Item eight. Public hearing and action to approve class L permit number C L two thousand and seven dash zero zero two to allow a game arcade at six twenty Paredes Line Road, Brownsville, Texas. Mayor and uh, city commissioners. I thought we took care of this, Ben. No it was tabled. It was, it was, tabled. It was okay. tabled, and this is a class so L we, permit. We, we know about it. I move to approve. Okay, we have a motion. Oh, I move to close public hearing. We have a motion to close public hearing. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Longoria. The motion was made by Commissioner Atkinson. All in favor to close public hearing? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. This is an action item to approve or disapprove. How, what is the wishes of the commission? Um, I'll second. Okay, a motion by Commissioner Longoria and seconded by Commissioner Atkinson to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'll abstain. Nay. 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 Commissioner Camarillo. I'll make that, might make that a nay too. Two nays, Commissioner Camarillo, uh, the mayor, and three, four. Commissioner Longoria, Commissioner Trani, and Commissioner uh, Atkinson, okay? Uh, action items nine. It, it passes. It passes. It passes. It's, it's, it's not three, a re resolution or an ordinance, which requires uh, four. Okay. Um, item nine, please. Item number nine, consideration and action on resolution number 2007-061 to permit, to permit free parking at all downtown parking meters during the holiday season from Sunday, December 9th, 2007 through Monday, December 24th, 2007. 
Honorable Mayor, uh, City Commissioners, uh, this is something that, that the uh, Brownsville City Commission has, has done as an incentive uh, to help the downtown merchants during the holiday season for many, many years. Uh, since, as you know, people are always complaining there's not enough places to park or they can't park long enough, and this is the one season that they have a chance to make it up. And so it's sort of a thank you for taking the trouble to come downtown looking for a place to park. And so for two weeks we've always offered that. And I, I should preface this by saying that uh, parking has been uh, a Traffic has been a, a wonderful help in, in tagging the meters by putting ribbons around them, making them look more festive. And by the way, the monies that normally would have been collected during these two weeks are not included in traffic's budget. So it's not a loss to them. They don't even include it because we've been doing this for so many years. How much do we lose in those two weeks? It's approximately, uh, Robert can correct me, but I think it's probably about 15000 We would approve, man. We can do one. Second. We can do one street. <laughs> Thank you. I can't stack them up, I'm unfortunately. Just <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. Um, motion by Commissioner Camarillo. Yes. And seconded by Commissioner Longoria to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goodman. Item 10, consideration and action on resolution number 2007-064 to request financial assistance from the Texas Water Development Board for the easement costs of various improvements to the city's utility system with the Villanueva Colonial Wastewater Improvements Project, authorizing the Financial Advisors, Bond Council, and Engineers to coordinate the submission of the application to the Texas Water Development Board and other matters in connection therewith. Mayor and City Commissioners, uh, through this resolution, which is a requirement of the uh, Texas Water Development Board's application for assistance, um, we need this resolution. Basically, we are providing through CDBG funds uh, sewer services to uh, Colonia west of Brownsville. Inside the city limits, uh, PUB will be the provider, um, but we started, we're leveraging our limited CDBG funds to get money from the Texas Water Development Board. So, we approve. Second. Motion to approve by Commissioner um, Camarillo, seconded by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 11. Item Secretary. 11, consideration and action on resolution number 2007-065 to authorize the purchase of certain real property described as 23.29 acres out of lot 5, block 205 of El Jardin subdivision and designating signatories for closing. Mayor, members of the commission, we're asking the city commission to pass this resolution to authorize us to go to closing to purchase this piece of property with the Part 150 program. Uh, the closing, uh, we'll pay the closing costs, but the offer has at, been accepted at fair market value, 315000 Approved. Second. Motion second by uh, motion by Commissioner uh, Longoria, second by Commissioner Triani. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item 12, consideration and action to approve the use of freelance grant writers for a 5% fee of the amount sought and awarded in conjunction with the City of Brownsville to encourage and enhance city revenues to meet the needs that are not being currently met. Okay, there is uh, an abundant uh, of grant money out there uh, available for our community. Uh, the trick is knowing where to find it. And uh, I hate to be losing out on, on funding for things that we could partner up with on, on cer certain ways or just get it directly uh, for the city because we don't have the, the grant writers needed. But I think if we open it up, as long as it's legal, uh, city attorney, and they work with the city underneath the city, make sure, you know, they run it by the city, that's what I mean, not work for the city, not work with the city, but work through the city to make sure it's not something that the city is already working on or will be working on. Uh, I think this would be a, a way to bring extra cash to make things a little better for our community. Um, it would be something that uh, I would hope the commission would welcome to open the doors for people to be looking out for those uh, monies that we we are losing out. Mayor, I have a couple of couple of comments to make sure. regarding regarding the this action item. First of all, I think it was a few months back when we were going through the budget process, and the asked city manager talking about growing our fund balance and so forth and co rising cost and all these issues came up. We talked about grant writing then. Uh, after that same meeting, this issue came up and was addressed to me. And doing some research never brought it back forward because 
I feel there's some major, <laughs> major issues that would not be, that this would not be beneficial to the city. And it would not be why, beneficial? It wouldn't be beneficial. Um, many things need to be considered. One, the individual that wants to come forward and write a grant for the city. We don't know who they are. We haven't looked at a background check. We don't know what they want to do. Two, we don't know the type of grant they're going to seek, if it's a good grant or it's a bad grant. Some of you might think, well, what are you talking about a bad grant? Is there such thing? Well, when there's a grant and it's going to ask for matching funds and we go get a grant for $100,000, and then that matching fund, they're asking another $100,000. Top of that, 5% over that $100,000 that whoever that individual was able to uh, be successful in getting the grant, it amounts to more resources that we probably might not be able to do at that time. So I have major, major issues with that. The other, the other issues that I have are compliance with any grant. And somebody mentioned, you know, that we don't have anyone in the city that could write federal grants. Well, I beg to differ. I think there are a few individuals in, uh, that work for the city of Bronzeville that are very, very capable of doing such. Nonetheless, compliance is another thing. We can go get a grant. We want to make sure the grant's being utilized properly. So this individual writes a grant, gets a 5%. I doubt they're going to come back and help the city figure out if the grant is in compliance or not. And I think that's a real, real serious issue. The money needs to be expended properly, and the city needs to, needs to lead that effort. And again, and finally, I, I, I don't think this is good policy for Bronzeville. After talking with some folks in McAllen, one of the things they, they did, and I thought is ideal, was about a few years ago they hired one individual to be a grant writer for the city of McAllen. They, they paid that individual about $34,000. And that one year, City of McAllen was able to produce 110% more in grant funding. Well, why was that? Because of the one individual that was able to produce the, write the grants. And thereafter that, city manager, Mike Bettis, was able to hire compliance, somebody to go monitor these grants and say, you know what, anyone in the city that's writing grants, we're going to know about it internally, and then we're going to go and research and find out, can we go get the grants, the grants can we be compliant? Uh, that process worked. It was very, very successful over there. And I think that might be the direction we want to ask the city manager to look at one position, go for a year, see what we bring into the city. We know the individual. We've gone through the background checks. Everything goes to that one grant writer. And then eventually it should be a department. Every community has a grant writing department, and it pays for itself. But we as a city commission need to step up to the plate and make a major decision to say, we need to fund this individual for the city of Bronzeville. I'd, I'd like everyone who wants to volunteer for the city should volunteer. When it comes to monies, federal or state, I believe we need to be extremely careful. This policy would be, I think, again, a very, very, very proactive and beneficial to the city of Bronzeville. Thank you, Commissioner Kuddy. I disagree, and I'll, I'll tell you, because I think you're, you're your, your premise is all wrong. First of all, they'd be working through the city. <laughs> if they, the city needs to do, make a requirement to where they do a background check. Well, let them do the background check. But these are grants. Let me explain it to you this way. The chief of police here, he's probably on top, and he has somebody on top of public safety grants. That's what they do. You hire one individual to be a grant writer who may not have the specialty in that area. And he may have a specialty in water. He'll focus only on water. I'm talking about grants that we don't even know are out there that could be brought to the city to benefit the city, increase our revenues to do some good things for. Any activity would have to be first be authorized by the city. And it would have to be something that the city's not working on. So in other words, you got 100% of nothing right now when you can have 95% of something, okay? And to, to, to create a perception that um, one grant writer is an expert in everything, it's impossible. Because you're dealing with beautification, you're dealing with streets, you're dealing with Boys and Girls Club, you're dealing with the dog pound, you're dealing with public safety, you're dealing with health issues, you're dealing with education. You, there's grants out there, there are abundant grants that we're missing out, and I would hate for us to shoot ourselves in the foot and close the door on something that we're not even getting. Why not provide an incentive for people to go out there and search and bring to the city, get approval to go after it, and increase our revenue? So it just makes our city better. It doesn't make sense to say no. 
only thing huh? I had a problem with was that it it's presented here as an action item versus something for discussion or something to be brought up for public comment. My particular issue on this is when you start asking for a 5% fee, if you refer to the Code of Ethical Principles and Standards of Professional Practice, you look under Section 18, members shall not pay finder's fees or commissions or percentages compensations based on contributions and, tell, and shall take care to discourage other their organizations from making such payments. You cannot be taking a finder's fee, Mayor. You cannot be taking a finder's fee. I'm, I'm not taking it. <laughs> Certainly, please don't. The don't, person don't, okay. that is applying for let, this. Let, let me read this to you. Reasonable payment means with respect to professional and other technical services, a payment in amount that is consistent with the amount normally paid for such, search, such services in the private sector. Okay? So th this would have to meet a criteria that is legal, Commissioner, and it would have to be set up by the city manager, the city attorney, but don't close the doors to monies we're not getting. This is done all the time with other entities. It's done all the time. I don't Please. think anybody wants to close the door. I think we'd all like to see revenues increase. I think the problem is that this is presented as an action item. Only certain grants can be done on a contingency fee basis, and it becomes a question. If you're just going to give carte blanche to we're going to have freelance grant writers, it, it doesn't work that way. They partner and the, with the city, Commissioner. They partner I understand with the that they, they partner have to with the We're looking at an action. Excuse me. Well, let's, let's, let's throw the excuse ball, let's throw I, the ball I was to the trying attorney. To speak, but I guess, you know. I'm sorry. I apologize. You know, the, I apologize. the point is, right. is that it's not a bad idea. The problem is it's made as an action item, and it's just it's overbroad. If we were to say these are the specific grants that we want to go after, then we have to determine can they do it on a percentage basis. Fine. But to just sit there and say, carte blanche, here we go, we're going to do this. No, it doesn't work that way. Let me ask the uh, city manager, c c city, uh, Charlie Atkinson, please. Um, have, do you feel your department or you all have researched this enough? to want to enter into this, or do you think you still need time to research the pros and cons of, of bringing in these type of grant writers? I mean, to me, free money is free money. But are we, are we, is it legal to do that? I mean, are we putting ourselves somewhere where we don't need a beach? Should, should, do you need more research on it to figure out where do we need to go with this? Because it's a great idea, Mayor. But I also would like to hear from the city manager on whether you think it's researched enough, where is it coming from, where are we going with this? Are there people, is there a demand right now for people to say, look, you know, I know this gentleman over here, Mr. Haas, he came forward, but Hasi, Hasi. Uh, but um, you know, what's your view on it? I'll have to talk to Mr. Hasi. I, I uh, unfortunately missed his comment. But, but, but you know, we could. I, we I, I have not researched this at all, period. Now, do we have grant writers in the city? Yes, we do. We have grant writers spread out throughout the department, specializing in certain grants for their department. We have never had a department uh, just solely made out of, made out of uh, uh, grant writers. I don't know if that's even effective, honestly. But well, and McAllen but we have, says we, it's effective. I, I, have, I have not talked to McAllen either. But, but we, we have grant writers throughout the city, for example, in our police department, uh, our, our MIS department, our health department, we have grant writers that specialize in obtaining grants in their related field. They research and identify grants that pertain to their departments. And that's if how it's done. If you want me to look at the idea of getting grant writers that are uh, in a department and just finding grants and then writing them up, well, we can do that. Charlie, my, my thing is that in PD and in bus, it's specific. It is that's separate. Exactly, that's what and I it's said. done like that in most of the communities I, nationwide. I, I, you know, I, I know the research there. So it is, it's separated. But internally, in-house, inside this city, obviously we know we have one in the health department, and that's it. Then you got bus and you have PD. If it was internalized, and, that, and I, I think you put the resources where it should be. One, one example, Mayor, going back to a grant that was written by one of our staff. The city became a preserve America community, and not because 
somebody from New York came in knocking saying, I want to, Bronzeville is a preserve America city. It's because somebody in the city of Bronzeville who works for us knows the culture, knows this community, decided to write the grant knowing there was a draft committee, knowing that there's a number of efforts being made by different organizations that says, you know what, we qualify. And when you went up to Washington and took that picture with First Lady, it was because somebody in this, in, 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 our, in our city staff was able to think and say, you know what, this is what we want to do, this is what we need to do, we qualify, we got the monies, and I think that's what we want to do. If it was, if, again, if we make a concerted effort and say, you know what, let's put the monies where they should be. I'm not, I, the concept of grant writing, that's the key. It's the concept of grant writing. But the direction that I believe, I strongly believe City Bronzo needs to go in is start now. Like one grant writer, let's see how, we go, how it goes, and then let's build on, let's build from there. Let me, let me, can I let, 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 uh, please. First of all, I think I'm not making myself quite clear, and I don't know how I can make, make myself more clearer. We're not talking about grants that the city is applying for, the city is aware of. I'm talking about grants. There's an abundance of grants out there that we don't even know exist that could be brought to the table to make the city better. And all we have to do is authorize the city manager and the city attorney to draft the criteria to make it sure it's legal and allow people, by providing an incentive, to bring those resources to our community to better our community. Now, I can't believe we're going to put obstacles to something we have 100% of nothing. And I'm not talking about the grants that we're working on or that, we, that belong to the city or our city grants only. I'm talking about those things that nobody's even aware of that can be brought through city approval in partnership with the city, like other communities do. Other communities do this. As long as it's legal, they draft the criteria that they must meet and comply with and welcome the opportunity to make your community better by bringing in additional monies. Now, if you don't want to, you can find obstacles to anything. But where are we left? With nothing? Well, then I That's guess what, what we want? should do you is we want, should move you to don't want it, you don't and want bring it back after to, we've got allow, the criteria. Allow, allow, Commissioner, allow me to let finish. I make a motion to the table. Uh, please, Second. allow me to finish. Mayor, I, 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 call, I haven't called I for a motion. I haven't called for, 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 for a vote. I'm saying, I'm saying is this, and there was a do second. not, okay, you have a second, you have a motion, but I haven't called for a vote. You, there is an opportunity to instruct the city attorney to come up with the criteria along with the city manager that allows people to bring re additional resources to our community for the benefit of the community on things that we, we're not benefiting. Perfect. You want Let's to say something, uh, Commissioner, I mean, uh, Commissioner, <laughs> city attorney, please. Um. It, it might help be helpful, Mayor, um, because I think that all of you are, what you're all saying is correct, but there may be a, an approach that would kind of uh, uh, make it possible to do what you're describing, and that is that, um, well, two things in terms of legal concepts. One is that, as you pointed out, for anyone to apply for a grant in the name of the city of Brownsville, you have to partner up. The grantor is going to require that the city's endorsement and authority be mm -hmm. uh, included in there. That's right. And uh, so. I would, you know, anyone's really free to bring to the city a uh, proposed grant application. At that time, we could evaluate it and de determine whether or not it was something that the city wanted to authorize and give city <coughs> authority. But the issue is whether we pay that 5%, well, right? And that leads to the second point, which is almost all grants uh, provide for, you can write into the grant application itself the expenses for the grant writing. Uh, almost all grants provide that. The thing that we or any entity has to be careful of, uh, as you all said, is if we are awarded a grant that we comply uh, very explicitly with the terms of the grant. So our, really, our, our, our big concern if we were to lend our authority uh, to the application for a grant and receive it is that we follow very, very explicitly, as Commissioner Comodillo said, the terms and provisions of that agreement and of that that we make with that grantor. Would you would so you recommend you tabling it then so you can find this information? Or? I, I think that it's possible for anyone out in the community that has a great idea that feels like there's a way for them to write a grant and and to be paid for doing it. Uh, but, I, but I think uh, I think it'd be great if we set a definition of what the city is willing to do to provide that incentive for people to go out there and say, hey, if I take something good to the city, something they're not doing with, 
I, I know I'm going to, my time is going to be compensated. Some that's fair, some that uh, similar communities are doing, and it has to be through the partnership of the, of the community. I don't see anything wrong with that. Do Mayor. you see anything wrong with that? I think the Mayor, city, manager, wa city manager wanted to say something. Yes, city I, I don't believe we can pay people a percentage of a grant. We can pay them from our, from our uh, funding, from our budget, but we can't just be giving percentages of grants People. I, I think I think other communities do it. Uh, well, but why don't we allow the, the city attorney, city manager, to explore the idea and bring it back in two weeks, uh, see what what they what they can come up with as a presentation? How's that, Mayor? How's that? I was involved in a grant through the Spanish program, and we had to maintain that grant for six years. And for six years, we needed to meet throughout. We needed to maintain. We needed to send reports to Austin, so that we could continue with the grant. And that involved our time. If somebody freelances it and brings it, and we need to continue throughout the year, continue with the processes, who's going to do it if the person that brought it to us is gone? They freelanced it. They brought it to us. It's in our lap. We need to continue with it. What do we do? Well, it's what, what part of our staff, what staff are we going to give Delina Barrera something else to do? Because she's the one with, right off the bat, with, Grant experience, Alex. Lewis. Let's give her the grant writing position, then. So Alex works for her. <laughs> Look, all grants are different, uh, you know, and they have to be subject to the city. That's that's where I think people get, keep getting away from. I think it has to be met with the approval of the city. Okay, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, there's good reasons um, to do it, and there's always those who I think you know find. You know, a, a reason not to do it, not to, not to do it. You know, that's, that's you're that's agreeing though to table it though, right? Mayor. But I'm well, asking. I think we I'm all agree that's a good thing, and I'm I think asking, what we want okay, are criteria. Right. Well, I'm asking. I'm asking that they be tabled with the instructions that they go over there and look at what other communities are doing, s s make sure it's legal. Uh, it's issue. I'm bringing the issue before us. Let's not lose the opportunity that we can make our community better. And, and I know uh, we can get there. I know it will benefit the community, but we have to have open minds that we can make things happen, not create obstacles to prevent things from happening. Yeah, anybody can block. Any, let me say, anybody can block something, but let's not block it just to block it. Let's make sure we can do it legally. Let's make sure it's under the city's uh, supervision in partnership with the city, and it meets the city's best interest, and that uh, and that everybody's. Uh, um, uh, is, uh, interest to serve as far as our community for the benefit of the community. That's all I'm asking. Mayor, That's let me say one last thing, Mayor, real quick to that. You know, I don't, I don't think anybody's trying to block you or do anything like that. Well, let it I want to be very, very clear that there's a way to do things. I don't agree with this way. There's nothing in detail, nothing. And again, we didn't write this. You put this together. So again, I just want to make sure and ensure that we do it properly. The grants, that's the key thing here. But Commissioner, we have to do it properly. That's all Commissioner, how much do I have to explain? Let the city attorney, let the city manager come up with something to present us. If it can be done, it's legal, proper, ethical, and in the benefit of the city. How many times do I have to repeat that? I mean, it can be done. Mayor, with your... With the Commission's uh, consent will formulate something for the next meeting, December, and bring it back to the That's commission. That's all I'm asking. Yeah. Well, he already had motioned already. Well, there had already been a motion about oh, 15 minutes ago. I mean, it, you know, this is okay. kind of repetitive. I would like, I would like the, um, uh, for you all to allow that to happen, okay? So can I... Um, Are we going to vote on the motion? motion? What is the motion? motion? It was motion to table and have the city attorney come back with criteria and the city manager with a procedure for implementing some either a person within Great. the city or you know have people submit bids which anybody can do at this point now okay okay I'll be happy okay, that's know. a better motion than we had before and I appreciate that well it would, it would probably entail a better document than we have now well sir are you I'm, are you I'm, trying I'm, to find fault with me bringing something good to the city you don't know what I'm finding fault in is that it is repetitive and if we're going to do things, we need to be prepared. And I think that's something that you've made a comment on, that we need to be prepared when we bring things to the city. Well, let's be prepared. Let's do things okay. the right way. That's what we've been trying to say for Sir, the last Sir, I'm bringing minutes. the issue to, for it to be developed. We have nothing now. It's easy to criticize. 
It's easy to grandstand. It's easy. To, no, you it's not grandstand. It's trying to make something happen for the city. Now, do we have a second? You continue what to put second? things on the agenda okay, who, who with no backup. Who can have a vote now. You don't have who, who second? Second. Okay, we have a second by uh, uh, Commissioner Camarillo. And I welcome you all to bring anything to the agenda that's going to make the city better. Any of you. Okay, we have a uh, motion by a second by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Garza, Next were, you, item. were you an A? Oh, for tabling it, okay. Mayor, were you an A or were you opposed? No, I, for tabling it with the instructions, they're okay. going to come back and bring it in two weeks or something, okay? Uh, the next item, please. Item um, 13, consideration and action to, to incorporate a handicapped designated area into the proposed Brownsville Sportsplex with the par proper park amenities and capital improvements to meet the city's handicapped children's needs. Okay, this is an issue brought to me by concerned citizens on the sportsplex. Uh, if M Mrs. Keller um, um, could get with some of the handicapped people to find a way to incorporate uh, their needs to make sure they have a designated area for handicapped children, uh, because <coughs> it's difficult uh, to be a little different sometimes in Kids don't feel comfortable around others who are, who may be seen uh, to appear abnormal. But we need to create an environment, I think, that is normal to them. And I would like to see us uh, perhaps start thinking of probably designating a certain section of, of the sportsplex to meet those needs, yeah. of, of those special needs in our community. And just maybe maybe you can have some. You're you're good at that. <laughs> well, I, I just want to add uh, what, what you put on is is, is Great, but through 4B, Richard Longoria, Chairman, and Delina, this sports park is going to have a miracle fill for the for the for the special needs uh, children out there in Brownsville. It's 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 really neat. It's 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 going to be all structured around special needs children. Uh, it's a, it's it's called a miracle park. It's going to be a park designated for special needs kids and. Everything around that sports park is going to be oh, okay. already accessible. So I wasn't aware of that. Yes. So is that what you're going to come up and say? That's great because people, I guess it's good that it's been brought to our attention because people who come up to me don't know that. So this will raise the awareness. Thank you. Uh, yes, Mayor. As a part of the process, when we were putting together the sports park, we had public input. As a part of the public input, this was one of the concerns that was brought up. Uh, as a result, what's occurring is one, of course, and it's required also by law, that the playground areas have to be ADA accessible uh, for uh, special needs children, number one. Number two, under the public input that did occur several years ago, as Commissioner Atkinson was just uh, discussing, is a concept of a miracle field came up, and a miracle field uh, is a specially designed baseball field to address the needs of disabled children. It's an, a field that is with, it's a synthetic field that's made with extra padding to address those children who are either in wheelchair or have to use adaptive uh, type of devices. And it also assists because many of the special needs children are very vulnerable to uh, break, breaking bones and other types of things. So it also assists in that area. And as a part of this, uh, when this issue was brought up, uh, we also contacted the BISD school district. And they, in fact, did inform us that it was a very large need for them, in fact, that they have over 3,000 special needs children in the school district. And at the current time, they're only limited to providing activities indoors in the gyms because of these concerns that any outdoor activities, of course, are limited because of injuries. Uh, so they were very happy to find out that in the long-range plans for the sports park uh, is included this miracle field. Again, that's, you know, I want to stress that it's in the long-range plans uh, as money is raised to continue the development of the sports park. Okay. Let me ask you this because uh, I'm not familiar with the depth of what you, you're doing. For instance, a child that, that may, maybe is um, uh, um, wheelchair-bound, can he get his wheelchair perhaps on a swing without getting, you know, going in through all the, that to where he can one swing? One of the things that the um, 
and that's one of the reasons the board has just approved the phase 1B for the playground area. And that was one of the reasons that they made it uh, in the playground area, that they put it as a contingency amount so that all the different types of issues, because we've had different issues come up in regards to the playground area, so some of these types of issues can be addressed as opposed to specifically identifying what equipment, because the board was under the realization that a lot of different things are still coming up in regards to the sports park. The other question I have, uh, Ms. Barrera, is, um, is, is, is uh, this section of the field, I guess, it'll be a section of the field, be restricted just to the handicapped children? I guess where, where I want to get to is, you know, um, kids are kids, okay? And they see somebody that maybe Down syndrome or somebody that it's not normal to them, um, it makes them feel uncomfortable, something like that. Will this be more or less secluded just, I don't want to use the word secluded, will it be just <coughs> designated for uh, the special needs children? It will be primarily for them, but actually the concept, uh, yeah. if, and if you had seen, I think just in the other day, in here, in this area, this is also part of the research that we did when we got the public in input, is that we have a program called Miracle Kids of South Texas. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, I think it was yesterday, the day before. Uh, the way that it works is uh, what they do or how most of these programs function is that they do it through a mentoring system. And through this mentoring system is that way you are also, uh, you get a buddy and the buddy works with the special needs child in the actual sporting activity. Um, I, the, one, the report that just came out, I think, like I said again, it was just yesterday, day before yesterday, they just had a program uh, up the valley where they did a football game. And then they, it was a junior high up the valley that did a, a, a program for the kids, and they, they partner with one of the kids because it also then makes the, all the children very sensitive to the needs and to be very positive and supportive of all of these kids, not just in that environment, but just in the general population to understand their needs and to be also, quote unquote, their buddy and their friend wherever they're at, whether it be not just out in the, in the playing field, but just out in public in general. Okay, let me tell you what I've heard, okay? And, and I'm very limited on this because I don't have a handicapped child, okay? Uh, the concern is that, you know, a child's wheel bound, sees other kids playing, and they can't do what these kids do. So the input I got from some of these parents was they would like to see just a designated area where it's just them, to where the family with handicapped children can go, have a picnic, and be around what they seem to, to, to as normal for them, for them, okay? Whether it's a wheelchair in a, in a, in a, in a swing, okay? that they can interact with other children that are handicapped, not uh, integrated with, with uh, Mayor, what you would call. I, I would uh, like to comment, my oldest brother, he's a uh, special needs, cerebral palsy, can't walk, can't talk since he was born. He's 48 years old. And I think he's lasted this long is because we didn't treat him as real special. You know, he was one of our family members, he misbehaved, he got spanked. You know, he, he uh, engaged with all our other brothers and sisters. You don't want to put them aside. You want to engage other kids, normal kids around kids like that because it, 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 it picks them up. And it will show these other kids that are normal, hey, this, this, I can play with this individual. You don't want to isolate anybody in a wheelchair. You want them engaged with, uh, with, with as many normal people as they can because once you treat them special, and you know, and I'm not saying that we have to go make them work, or whatever. But, but I mean, some of them do work. But okay. you, I, 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 I don't know enough about it. You know more about it than I do. I'm just, Dr. You, I'm just. Doctor Barrera, could you explain to the I mayor the, the concept of the what the sports park entails and what it's going to be? But let, let me let me let me finish. Um, what I, I'm just relaying to you the concerns I got from handicapped children. Okay, they know more about it. You know more about it. I relate the issue to you. And that's all I'm doing, okay? So based on that, I'm their voice. They asked me to do this, and I'm doing it. 
And please okay. ask them to contact me. And so like I said, it was, I will. we've had public input okay. to continue to try okay. to address And like I said, Commissioner, you may know more about it. I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to know about it because I don't have a handicapped child, and, and my heart goes out to them. I'm just trying to mm -hmm. bring the issue to you and to the City Commission, perhaps some to consider. If not, it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. Okay. Thank you. And just real Let's quick. table this. Uh, just, well, if you, if you don't mind. Essentially, this is an all abilities park is what you're saying. And so yes, it's, they're not going to segregate children out, and the idea is to integrate them in, correct? Yes. And that's already in, in place, and that's already part of the project and the plan. So we, yes, can, we can move to approve it because – well, It's actually moot. I mean, it's, oh. it's already been done. It's a mute, yeah. Okay. The, the, uh, can we table this? Move to strike. To strike because it's, it's already it's, – it's pertaining to 4B, and it's already well, done. Just, just table it indefinitely. That's what you have to do. Can I have a motion? I'll second that. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? <coughs> no. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Um, but those that have parents, uh, their parents to handicapped children, uh, you may want to contact uh, Mrs. Barrera or the city here that put you in contact with them. And if you want to give more input, it'd be welcome. Okay. Uh, next item, please. Item 14, consideration and action to amend the city budget for expanding the city animal shelter for a capacity of 300 pets. Okay. Back then, it was an issue of the fund balance. And uh, my understanding, talking to Pete, that the fund balance went from not the 12 million that he estimated, but to the 15 million. And what I'm asking for is for consideration here to start the process to address the problem that we have here is lack of capacity, lack of personnel, but it's a long process. It's not done overnight, uh, which would uh, uh, could start today by saying, okay, uh, let's look at what it would take to expand the shelter, how much it's going to cost, and uh, um, what is it that it needs to be staffed and to run it properly and stuff like that. Based on that, I brought the uh, issue based against, again, constituents that have concerns that we're picking up 15 to 20 uh, pets daily and uh, there's not enough capacity and we're having to euthanize more pets than we should be euthanizing. When uh, if we were to look at McAllen, who has a 300 capacity plus, compared to Brownsville's 52 capacity. How and based on that, I brought it. How much are we talking about, Mayor? Pardon me? How much money are we talking about? Well, I think the, the best thing to do is to allow the city manager to look at, uh, uh, at uh, similar communities this size, what the, what the capacity should be, and see what the cost would be <laughs> to, to do uh, something similar here in Brownsville to see if it's feasible. Are you asking for a feasibility study, or are you asking no, us I'm to No, I'm asking amend? for the city manager to look into, okay, for instance, this, if you want to compare McAllen, for instance, McAllen has over 300 pets. What, uh, my, my concern, capacity. again, on this is if we're going to be asking city manager, again, to be looking at another, why is it on an action item? Why isn't that on a discussion? Because you've got to give them authorization. But not on an action. Why not? You got to well, you're, you're you get to action. Well, you're wording it to expand. You're not wording it to get to, to look help to, them to, further. To, yes, it's to unclear. expand. What's the budget? What's the uh, mayor? Uh, what do we hear from from Pete Gonzalez? Well, actually, before we you know, ask Pete, may I just want to you know comment on this? I sit on the Animal Shelter Advisory Committee. Last time we met, last month when we when we met, this item, well, this was brought up, expanding the animal shelter, and Dr. Wooding, who's the new veterinarian, the first time, our first veterinarian for the city of Bronzo, said this wouldn't be a good idea. And the reason why she said it wouldn't be a good idea is that we are about to open up the first animal clinic the city has ever seen. Instead of voting on something that says, the, you know, expand the capacity for 300 pets, we should be voting on surgical tools so she could start doing the spaying and neutering that we need so that we can control the population and see how that goes before we go and say, how many millions is it going to take to do a phase one, a phase two, or phase three? We don't know yet. What we do know, in, and some of the, your volunteers and the staff have put together, are the number of adoptions that have taken place. There's probably been more adoptions on a monthly basis the past <coughs> three months than there probably has been in the past year or two years. That goes credit to the people that are working very hard. We need to let the system work. You need to let the committee come back and come to the commission and say, you know what, this is what's going on so far. These are the areas of need and then let them strategically plan. And so going back to expand, making a decision to go and expand the animal shelter today without even knowing the, the, uh, the, the, the without even knowing if the spaying and neutering works, 
it doesn't make sense. And well, again, and it's nothing against, again, it's, it's not, we're not strategic planning, we're not allowing time to let Dr. Wooding and the animal shelter staff do its work to then come to the commission and say, you know what, we do need this because of following. But yet they'll have data to produce and say, you know what, this is why we need it, as opposed to, I think we need it. That's not it's the not, it's not I think we need it, Commissioner. I think I've been, I don't know how many, I know your committee has rarely met, okay? And I know well, I've been involved. <laughs> you, according to your statements, when I asked you the last time, you rarely met. Uh, I think uh, twice in one year or something like that. But let, let me point this I out. Uh, uh, let me point this out. We cannot ignore the fact that the shelter is too small. It's not for the size of this community. We cannot ignore that fact. We cannot ignore the fact that we're, we're euthanizing 7,000 pets annually. And yes, we made a lot of headway with volunteers. Okay, <clears throat> I know that. And, and, and as the city manager can tell you, I've been very involved and was very instrumental in bringing a vet to, to the uh, animal clinic and also looking for funds to, to uh, finish out the animal clinic, which Mrs. Uh, Stillman uh, contributed money for that was being ignored till I got on board. I know these things. What did I say? It was, yes, it was ignored. It, yes, was, it was not ignored. It was ignored. God, he, look at your grandstand, Pat. It no, was no, not no. being ignored. When I brought it to the attention of the city manager, he didn't even realize there was money that was donated by Mrs. Stillman that was not being appropriated. We he did. found that money. We dealt it? with that okay. issue when we were at the no, last commission, Pat. Stop okay, it. Look, Mayor, what, I'm like saying is, what I'm saying is this. The capacity is not sufficient. We cannot ignore that. You want to block it, you can block it. I'm just bringing the, the, the issue. Yes, because Let you don't want to address work. the problem. Let the problem the is work. there. Let's address the problem. Let's look for Let solutions. Work, it's easy to kill it. It's easy to undermine it. But let's, you know it's not up to capacity. Let's authorize the city manager to start looking to b making some plans for expansion for a for an uh, for a, 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 a animal shelter the size of this community should have. The solution That's what I'm is saying. not just the expansion, Mayor. You, I think you need okay, really well, I'm not getting nowhere. Uh, let, you want to you vote no, vote no. Make a motion. Mo wanna, make a motion. No, make no, a motion. no. I, I want to hear from... Second. You are one of the smartest people I've ever met. You bring wonderful ideas to the table. You have good vision. Take my lead, then. Good ideas. Follow my lead. But... This is what keeps these good ideas from continuing, Pat. You, you cut us off. You shut us off. We're asking you to let the process work. And no, Pat didn't get his way, so okay. what? Go against me, guys. Go against me. It's not about going against okay, you, what's Pat. the process you want to work? You want to sit here for another 10 years? How long was this animal clinic, sir, that he got started and never finished? Three years. Three years till I made it an issue, sir. I made it an issue. You're, right you're right. I did make it an issue. Some That's why it got, it got started to be finished. And you try to block it. Instead of being part of some positive, you turn it into a negative. By you, I can kill it. Yes, you can kill it. You have, but you're not serving your community in the best interest to make it happen. You, so, there's excuses to make it happen. Have you given there's the excuses spade, not to make it happen. Have you given the spade and neutering program a chance? Sir, we're working with that. But well, there's one more, of the problems with the spay and neutering to, program that we have more, right now, one of the big problems is that people can't... You need can, funding uh, for spay and neutering, you need the equipment, have, and tools. you need capacity. Well, they don't have tools, yes, and then the yes, other problem is, right. so is that they allow the people to take the animal before it's spayed and neutered. I mean, how can you expect somebody to, to walk out of there with an animal that's not spayed and neutered and then come back and have not it... true. You know, it's, it's, it's one, of the, one of the big problems, because we've adopted a, an animal recently, and they asked us to, you know, come back and, and do that. And, you know, we luckily went back and had the, the animal spayed, but, you know, how many people don't come back? And th I think if you're going to control an animal population and you really want to be humane about it, then you should spay and neuter your pets that you're not going to breed for a specific purpose. And staff, again, is working on identifying an ordinance exactly. that would make and allow and mandate the public to do the following. But, again, I guess, I guess we don't want to hear what staff or people have to say. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not talking about killing the program, but let's be realistic Look, about it, Mayor. That's all I say. Yeah. That's all I say. <coughs> My concern is that, Mr. Mayor, you have not contacted me at all. As a matter of fact, you don't even talk to me, uh, which is separate and apart. But I would like to be informed by you. If you have something on the agenda, I'll, I'll talk to you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have anything personal against you. Like, I concur 100% with Commissioner uh, Longoria. What he said about you, you're very smart, you have great ideas, 
but you don't want to share anything with us. You put it on the agenda and then you want us to. Commissioner, I encourage you to go. I go to the adopt-a-thons at the flea market. I go to the meetings. I encourage you to go to the meetings and get educated if this is an issue that you are concerned about. If, you're, if it's the only the airport that you want to talk about, that I encourage you to do that. Get involved. I, I can't hold your hand. I'm involved with the airport. Let me, let me finish. Let me finish. I can't hold your hand. I don't know what issues you want. Now, spay and neutering, that's a top priority. Now, when you adopt a pet, it costs about $125, but it has to be spayed, neutered, and vaccinated. You see, Commissioner, I guess, I mean, Trinidad doesn't know what he's talking about because that pet, when it's taken out, out of, out of, the, out of, the, out of the animal shelter, what I'm talking has, to go, about. has to go, listen to me, has to go to the vet, okay, and must be spayed and neutered in order to get adopted, and it costs 125 That's you're exactly right. Right. my point, you're, you're and if you'd right. like, let, let if let you're going to say I don't know what let I'm let talking about, I'd like the opportunity to take the floor to explain myself. Commissioner is right. We don't have the equipment to spay and neuter, okay? I ra you know, we, we raised that be a good thing to have we $35,000 to raise awareness and educate people on spay and neuter. It is a priority to us. But I'll listen to you right now. I'll listen to you too. Let's amend the budget to get the equipment right now. I will make, you know, Dr. Woody said. Let's I amend the budget to. How much are we going to need? I mean, that's the whole problem yeah, that we have here, let, Pat. Let, let, is let that the city no manager plan. find it out. Just, let the city manager find out what it needs to, to equip that, that animal clinic with everything it needs and authorize them to come back in two weeks with a figure to, to amend the budget. The clinic is being, is being worked on right now, and it's, it's not completed yet. Once it's completed, she'll let us know of any issues relating to equipment that she needs. When, when is that? A few weeks. Two weeks? Also, also uh, adding to the shelter, you know, we have people working on that as well. It, it's going to... It's going to cost it, money. It's going to cost... How much? I would say $800,000 to add this amount, this, this amount of capacity to the current animal shelter. Can we do it in if phases? We use, if we use the same material uh, and, and people that we use to, to build what we have now, yes. And can, we can do it in phases, phase one, phase two? Commissioner, well, but we be should up. know, though, before we make that decision or staff makes a decision, we should know first what we are looking at. And I think that's where, again, going back to allowing that's where you authorize him to, do to it. come to the table and say, you know what, Dr. Wooding or Mr. Hinojosa, however, let them come and say, this is what we need, as opposed to, I think we need this. That's not the way it should be done. Well, we obviously hired a, uh, a doctor to work there, so obviously we're going to have to give, give her the equipment she needs yeah, exactly. to do what she's supposed to do. So that's obviously something that's going to come to the commission. Yes. I appreciate that, City Manager. Are we going to hear from I would Mr. Like Gonzalez, to see Mr. Mayor, are we going to hear from Pete Gonzalez? No, uh, no, it's not necessary. I would like to see a, a plan uh, working with the, with the staff to what it would take to, to expand the shelter. It may not be up to the same materials. Uh, you know, maybe we should have uh, a choice between using the same materials or maybe less costly uh, to save money, but also being compliant. We should look at those things, okay? That's all I'm saying. Let's bring it. Uh, the issues being brought here, we're not a, the, the, the dog pound is not up to capacity for this size of this city. It's a major problem. We should address it, and we should look for ways to fund it, and we should look for ways to make it happen. We can sit here and just wait for things to happen, and it's not going to happen. Okay. Ms. Alton, to... would you like to come up? I call it dog pound because I don't see this. An animal shelter protects the dogs. I see there as a slaughterhouse. That's why I call it a dog pound. And with all due respect, Ms. Uh, with all due respect, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Mrs. Alton, uh, the, ni the name is nice out there, but it's a slaughterhouse. Mayor, one pound. of the problems is, is that if you don't have the facilities up and running and you don't have Dr. Wooding performing the neutering and the spaying on site, people are allowed to take the animal off site to go to a vet. They're supposed to go to the vet after the fact. If you can walk out the door with the animal, who's going to ensure that the animal actually gets spayed and neutered? Okay, we're, we're creating a no, catch-22 situation. And what we need to do is have Dr. Wooding have the supplies and the time necessary to do the spay and neutering there, just like they do in other cities, and we can go from there. Okay. 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 Obviously, we're not going to do anything, but let me correct you. That nobody can take the dog out of there. The, 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 animal, the dog pound or the animal shelter, as you want to call it, sends the dog 
to the to to the uh, to the vet, and they they go pay for it, and then they go pick up the vet, the dog. The, nobody walks out of there with a dog, spayed neutered, oh. with no guarantee of getting it done. Anyway, I don't have the support to do it. I brought the issue. You can find it. Uh, we, just need, we just need more information. To the next we item. need more information, Mr. Mayor, and I move to. So are you uh, uh, withdrawing your uh, uh, your item? No, uh, uh, you you make a motion, either table it or or. or uh, uh, reject it, whatever you want. I'll make, the I'll make a motion. I'll make the motion. I make the motion to authorize the city manager to look to bring there plans for expansion. Already, I'm, I'm making a motion to there for expansion. There was a motion in a second already prior oh. to what you're saying. Are you here? Well, there, uh, it's been said. You don't hear a lot of things. You don't uh, allow anybody to speak or say. I make I'm a motion. Speak. Mayor. You, you, mayor, you spoke. Mayor, you want to say? Let's, let's stop say that. Something additional. I'm commissioner, to hear commissioner. Here, here uh, there's a there motion in the there second. Was a What's the motion? What's the motion? I want to table this until we have uh, more. I thought I was asking if I wanted to table it. Okay, so you're, ask, you're, you're making a motion to table? Yes, sir. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner uh, uh, Garza and seconded by Commissioner Triani to table. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Okay. Let's go to the next item. Item 15, consideration and action to approve the Community Development Block Grant Agreement between the City of Brownsville and Cameron Willisie County Community Projects. Good evening. Uh, this item is, uh, my name is Lucy Garza, Housing Manager for the City of Brownsville. Uh, this item is so that we can uh, contract with Cameron Willisie County's Community Projects for the rehab program. It's a CDBG funded program. It is budgeted and, uh, and approved. So moved. We have second. a motion by Commissioner Longori, second by Commissioner Turiani. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Next item, Chief item, Secretary. Item 16, consideration and action to award a contract to perform a certified powertrain rebuild and general repair options to D8R Bulldozer for the Public Works Department and Landfill Division. Good evening, Mayor, City Commission. Um, at the request of the Public Works uh, Director, uh, the Purchasing Department obtained a proposal from uh, Hall Caterpillar of Westlaco. This is uh, for a 1998 model uh, dozer that is in need of repairs in order to sustain extended duty at the city landfill. Without this rebuild, uh, the city will run the risk of equipment failure over the next few years. You all approve this? Yes. Recommendation is to award a contract to perform a certified powertrain rebuild and general repairs uh, for the um, 1998 Caterpillar. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. A motion by uh, Commissioner Atkinson, second by Commissioner oh, Longoria. Uh, Triani. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, motion <laughs> from Commissioner Triani, second by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? No. Aye. Aye. All opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Next item, please. Item 17, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase of two 2008 year model 14 to 16 cubic yard dump trucks for the Public Works Department Streets Division. Okay, this is uh, also um, at the request of the Public Works Department. Um, the purchasing department solicited proposals from AGAC and the BIWAR uh, for a quote on a, uh, for two 14 to 16 cubic yard dump trucks. Recommendation from staff is to award a contract for the purchase of two new uh, model 2008 freight liners for the Public Works Department to Houston freight liners from uh, using HEAC contract pricing in the amount of $163,816. I make a motion to approve. Second. Funding has been. Yes. Funding motion by uh, yes. Commissioner uh, Garza, seconded by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Item 18, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase of one 15-foot flex-wing rotary mower for the Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport. At the request of the Aviation Director, Larry Brown, the Purchasing Department solicited uh, once again uh, proposals from the by uh for the purchase of uh, one new 15-foot uh, flex-wing rotary mower attachment. Staff recommends this? Yes, sir. It, uh, staff recommends the purchase and delivery of, of this uh, attachment. Funding's already been obtained? 
Yes, sir. It's for fifteen thousand nine twenty-five. I'll move to approve. There's going to be second. a budget amendment for Motion the funding. Motion to Mr. Garza and seconded by. Oh, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on. I'm just want to clarify that funding in place. It's going to be a budget amendment that's going to come. Funding come later. Uh, it's subject to a budget amendment from the finance department. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Item 19. Consideration and action to award a contract for operation management services for the recycling center of the city of Brownsville. Any discussion? I would like to, to request um, two things. If it's legal, to, um, to request authorization to negotiate a service contract with ESD or table the item and bring it back uh, to the next city commission meeting. It's legally permissible to do either one at the will of the commission. Uh, I believe that you solicited requests for proposals, right? That is correct. Yeah. Following that and subsequent to the uh, completion of that process, it is permissible for uh, someone under the commission's direction to negotiate that or alternatively the commission could vote to table it if they want more time to consider. I'll make the motion to table. I know we spoke, had some some items I wanted to ask to see if we, can, if we could put into the, into the uh, contract agreement. So I, I didn't feel too comfortable with some of the things. I have some some minor questions that I think we could get worked out. So I'd like to I'm, I'd, I'd like to make the motion to table. So this is the third time, uh, guys. I mean, come on. Third time where, man? Third time for what? Excuse me. What is the recommendation of staff? Okay, we have a motion. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second to the table. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. I didn't vote because I, I had just asked a question. Well, I would uh, I would like to request authorization to negotiate a service contract with ESD to finalize it and bring it back to you all and, and have a complete um, proposal agreement. And this is your recommendation, your yes. staff. That is correct. Why are you opposing it, Commissioner? He's motioning to table. I, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with what he's saying, that there's some issues that they want to work out. I do Bring too. it back. Bring it back. Okay. On the next right. so I'm saying I vote in favor. Thank you. Okay. Next item, please. Item. Mayor, you want us to talk about what this is so we can explain the project? Go ahead. Okay, I have uh, Marta Martinez. Uh, she's representing uh, ESD Recycling. She would like to have a few minutes. Explain the project. To, to explain. Uh, this, is basically, this is basically a contract uh, between the City of Brownsville and ESD for the operation management services of the recycling center. Not only that, but uh, part of this agreement will be to also um, have uh, more containers within the city of Brownsville, different parks, churches, schools, uh, city city uh, buildings, and you know to recycle. And and there's more than that. That's why um, I would like to get uh, uh, permission to come <laughs> back and bring a a, a complete uh, proposal. Okay. Let me ask you something, Robert. Is EDC is the only people that can do recycling? I mean. Are we going out for bids? Or we went. Uh, we did uh, the RFP. We went out for proposals, and uh, there was another company by the name of uh, Island Services Corporation. Oh. They they were represented at the pre-proposal meeting. The thing is, uh, we only received one proposal, and the proposal was from ESD. So what I would like to do is have uh, Mrs. Martinez to have a few words. Thank you for the opportunity. Believe me, I've been trying to recycle in Brazil, believe me, for my last 18 years. I've been trying to have the opportunity. The opportunity that I'm offering to the city of Brazil and to my community, it's free. I don't know why we have to discuss something that is going to be free. I, pr I, I want to provide education. I want to provide my equipment. I want to provide new culture. I want to teach. And I've been doing this for free. Why to the night to your community? You are our represents. Why to delay this? I've been, yes, Mayor, you, this is the third time that I've been here. Probably 
This I is not a good, this is not good on behalf of the city that discourages somebody that wants to do something to help the community for free. We've yes. had volunteers work with you to work out a plan to make this happen. And I can't understand why we're discouraging people who are willing to do something that she really doesn't even have to bring to the city commission. Ladies and gentlemen, no, let me tell she doesn't you have to bring it to the city commission. No. The city of Matamoros, they've been asked me to provide the service, and I've been doing for them. City of Reynosa, they asked me for the service, and I've been doing for them. I've been doing environmental services for my last 24 years. Okay? I work in, in Padre Aslan, Port Isabel. I have drop-off locations almost everywhere. Uh, about a year ago, they told me, move out your containers people from another entities from here, from locally, from Brownsville. I don't want to mention names, but I'm tired. I told myself, I'm going to do it because I want to do it. I want for my, my children to drive their bicycles and clean roads. No matter what do you prefer, commissioners, to have this on the, on the roads or in three minutes, to have prime material from trash. What is the problem? Why to delay more this? For a free service, it's going to take another how many years? 18? Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Mrs. Martinez, and God bless you. I know you want to do something. <clears throat> I think we should not table this. I think we should pass it support it, embrace it, and be part of it. I, mean, I, just want to, I just want to say the following. After meeting with Ms. Martinez, and I, I want to thank her for coming here, I've only, I've only had the opportunity to meet her once, and that was about a week ago, two weeks ago when we met at her, uh, at her business. And uh, she's a very fine lady, and I know we're going to do business with ESD for Bronzo to start recycling. Yet there are a few issues that I think that need to be brought up. Again, it's, it's, not, it's a business. And that's important to know, is that you know, we need to be, I think, very careful when we're going to give all of our recyclables uh, to one company. And although that might be for a year or two years, well, hold on, For Mary. three years, hold but on. it's at no that cost might, to us, Commissioner? Well, again, Commissioner. What, what's the cost? There's no cost. There's no cost at this point. But I think what's, what we're missing the point is there are other organizations, there's other businesses that provide people that take an aluminum can they pay you a percentage. They give you uh, so many cents per pound, plastic, paper, so forth. We won't have that, or the public won't have that opportunity with ESD, although unless it's incorporated into the following. If we're going to give everything, you know, we're going to recycle. That's the key thing. Is that why you wanted to table it, to make sure that, because other people in Brownsville recycle their own we're, way. We're, we're going to table it, but we promise next time we'll be ready. There's a couple of issues that we need to address. Number one, She's going to be working out of our facility. No, uh, that's just one, one facility. And, yes. It Which doesn't one? have Our facility, reporting. and who's going to pay for what? The electricity? Who's going to pay, Taxpayers. Who's going to pay for any uh, upgrade, any issues relating to equipment failure, uh, maintenance of the building, et cetera? We need to address those uh, before we can honestly say we recommend or not recommend. So... You have to be patient. We didn't, we didn't get this done, and we need to do it before we honestly tell you yes or well, I'm no on the table. in relating this. It's already okay. done. It's already been done. Thank you, <coughs> Mr. Kevler. Okay, uh, next item, please. Item 20, update on impact fees. Uh, Gigi Gomez, are you here? Again, the citizens want to, I, I know what's happening with the impact fees, but the citizens want to know, so here it is. Please give us an update. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, for the record, I'm Genoveva Gomez, Director of Water and Wastewater at the Brownsville Public Utilities Board. Uh, back in October, October 23rd, the Black and Beach, the consultants, uh, requested some information from uh, PUB in the city of Brownsville. So far, we've uh, given them about half of the information already. And uh, we're going to be finishing with uh, that request by the end of December. We should have a meeting, an orientation meeting, at the beginning of January. No, 
And then after that, we're going to be reviewing all this information and having meetings, and hopefully by August of uh, 2008, we should be completing all the process wow. of the impact fees. So uh, when? We're that already? long? The 2008? That long? Yes. It's, we have meetings. We have uh, public hearings and public meetings throughout. Required by law. Required by law. Yeah, but we already did that. But we have to do it again. Now, let me ask you something. I talked to the Attorney General. And I asked him, okay, this process that we're going through with impact fees, you know, uh, if like next in two weeks we put something on agenda to put an impact fee number, he, his answer was, you're already violating the law right now. I need a number. I need a number quick. 2008, there's no way we're going to wait that long. We've already been through a process. We already know, I think the commissioners here can, can pretty much come up with, with uh, a decent number, uh, especially where they, the way the market is right now. I asked them, if we provide a number, are we within the law? He goes, you're already breaking the law by not giving me a number. So to say that if we give a number two weeks from now, it's against maybe the process, but we've already been through the process. It was rescinded back when, when it shouldn't have. That's fine, but we've already been through public hearings. Everybody knows the issue. If we provide a number in two weeks, because I think that's what the people of Brownsville want, are we, well, of course, you're going to say we're not within the law, but it's going to be accepted anyway, right? We have to start the process from scratch. Because and it's been too long since it ended. Yeah, but, but even if even if this process says, okay, it comes back to 4500 is let, that let, something we really want to put it at? Let, let, let me say this. First of all, the, 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 uh, there's too much time that has passed since the process ended, which requires us by law to follow Statute 395. We're already okay. violating the law. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, well, wait a second. Are, okay, let, let me finish. The, the, uh, the, the scope was changed also Correct. from five years to ten year plan. So which uh, the planning department worked up a land use assumption for the next ten years. Now it's got to be matched with PUB's capital improvement to meet that growth in the next ten years. Okay. So based on that, that even changes everything even further more. Okay. Which requires us to initiate the process all over again, update the study, the cost figures, and the time frame, okay? So by law, we have to follow that process. Nobody's going to cite us for anything if we follow these steps. Am I right, uh, City Attorney? I think Commissioner Axton is referring to Julian Grant in the uh, uh, Texas Attorney General's office. He's been, uh, he, he is aware of the problems that we've had here. He's aware of the process that we're going through. He would like to see that it reach some sort of a conclusion, but he understands that that we're complying with law by continuing to attempt to establish an updated or revised impact fee. We have one in, in place. It's not the one anyone wants, but... We have one in place. We're in compliance right now. Well, he would like for us to accelerate, you know, as much as possible for us to... to yeah, but there's certain time constraints that are, are based on... that We were waiting on the city to come up with... We can't do the capital improvements without the land use assumption plan. We were waiting on the city for that. Now. If you're recommending something else, give us a legal opinion in writing. Authorize this commission to come up with the number based on the last study. And she's off the hook. PUB's off the hook. And we're off the hook. Let you're me ask you something. If that number, which was the last number, 3,090, if we come up with a number under 3,090, can we move forward or not? We still have to go through the process. Right now, we, um, we gather some information from the city, the land use assumption. Uh, we went ahead and turned that in, and we've turned in some of the data. Again, the land use assumption that we had uh, last time, it was based on five years, and all the capital improvement projects were based on five years. Exactly. Time has lapsed already. Uh, we did get a land use assumption for 10 years, and now we have to uh, compose a list of projects, a capital improvement. I'm sorry. Is the Mayor Pro Tem going to take over? Yeah, I'll take over. Um, Want to take proceed. the center seat? No. All I'm saying is if we come back with a number in two weeks, this is something I've been working on with Commissioner Cisneros. And some, if we come back with a number, a temporary number, because right now 280, I think PUB is going to end up putting back 
the burden on the citizens of Brownsville. I don't want that. So if we come up with a number in two weeks, a temporary number, and if, and if it comes back to where it's higher or lower, we fix it. I mean, that's something we can do, can't we? Okay. I think everybody here knows that 280 is just We need to ask our city attorney. Uh, can we do that, Jim? Yeah. No, sir. Uh, we do ha because we completed the process and then, and then undid it, we do have to start over. I don't know why it would take so long, but there's a minimum period of 60 days for, uh, under the statute for notification of the hearings and to conduct the hearings, and then another 30 days for the kayak to formulate their recommendations. So I, we do have to go back through the process. I would hope we don't have to go all the way back to the beginning, but we'll have to uh, take what exists currently of the land use assumption plan, the capital improvement plan. But no, we've got to come up with a new capital improvement plan. That's what, let's see, we have to get the engineers to say, okay, what is it going to take to meet that growth? So it's not done I would by hope printing. They, they have a start on that already, I'm sure. The land use assumption has already been done, the 10 year. Based on that, we have to come up with a capital improvement plan. Uh, program uh, project list which we're working on and then once we gather all the information some of the the financial uh, data that we need is going to be based on that list of uh, the 10-year uh, project list and then after that we have to review all that information with a consultant which is Black and Beach and then at that point they will decide which projects apply and which ones do not apply and then we will have the meetings. It sounds like waiting on the consultants will probably be the most time consuming. Why are they taking so long? Because we have to review every single project to make sure that we have all the, the, the data and to make sure that they, um, that they um, are part of the improvement. Well, like how many lift stations are going to be needed to meet that certain area of growth? These are very technical things that must be taken into account in order to come up with a true cost estimate. That's correct. We have to base it also on the master plan, and based on the master plan that we have, it's been updated in, in 2006 on the water side, and we're working on the master plan on the wastewater side, which we're also waiting on that. But that's what I'm saying. If this thing comes back saying the impact fee has to be $6,000, I don't think this city can handle that $6,000 fee. That's what I'm saying. If, we're, if we put it at somewhere reasonable to where, because of the way the market is right now, and we don't want to stunt growth in Brown, yeah, Brown, but we're, we're even if some study says eight six thousand. Well, obviously we've done other studies on top of that. You know, politics has played a big hand in this. And to to, to say we got to wait till two thousand when of two thousand eight August August of two thousand eight. You're just putting a burden on a lot of pressure on. Well, not you, but we've lost process. millions of dollars. We've lost millions. And of you dollars. know, and, and you know, and it was politics back when, and it's politics that's going to keep this on the table for. For August 2008, you know, I mean, I just think that we can come up with a number right now, a temporary number, and when it does come, hey, if we have to lower it, lower it. We have to raise it, raise it. And then I, I, I urge uh, Mr. Goza to find that out for me because what? We, we've been through it already. Uh, you do have to comply with the statutory provisions, and it does prescribe once you've okay. reached the end. Okay. Then why was it allowed to be rescinded by ex-commissioner Ernie Hernandez? Why was it allowed? If we Politics. if we voted on something and it was a, a, the right number, the mayor voted for it, we all voted for it, and then it was rescinded. That's and then that, that just messed up our whole... Why, why was that allowed back then to rescind it? Politics. And then now you're telling me we've got to wait another year and a half. Same thing. Once you've completed the process, before you can pick a new number, you have to start over again. But we didn't ever pick the number. Commissioner, Commissioner, let me answer your question. Let me answer your question. The end result is the same. Let me finish that. We never picked the number because the number that was two thousand two thousand was rescinded by Ernie Hernandez. 2000. Uh, so, therefore, there hasn't been a number given. I think it was, I think Commissioner uh, Sally Arroyo made a motion for 2133. 21 we backed her up okay, on that. And it was approved. Then it was rescinded. It so was the number was picked. No, but it was rescinded. But, but it was picked. That's right. The process was completed. Uh, <laughs> this, this, this was chosen that there would be that the process once it had been completed was set aside. Either way, we're back to the starting point. We're back. We have to give the statutory notice of the hearings. We have to conduct public hearings. We have to present that information to the kayak, give them time to review each one of the capital improvements individually, be sure it qualifies with the provisions of the statute. 
I don't know that it would take until August, but it will definitely take a good three or four months. So you wouldn't recommend us putting on the agenda next meeting to come up with a number? No, sir. You would not recommend that. It's not legal. Ma'am, ma'am, can you know we're illegal right now? Can, can you all make an effort to expedite this matter and maybe get it done by the end of March? I'm not sure about the end of March. Who, who are we on? waiting on? Black and Veatch? Well, we have to gather all the information, and that's not going to be done until the end of December, based on the capital improvement project list. And then once we do that, we're going to provide that information to Black and Veatch, and they have to review it. The other thing, it's a new committee. So we have to have, before we have any meetings with the public, we have to have meetings with, with the committee and bring them up to date on all these different projects, because now it's a different list of projects. Some of the projects have already been done. And again, it was based on five years, now it's based on 10 years, and it's a completely different committee. So we need to update them on every single project. The end result, Commissioner, was to prolong this, and it works in favor of the developers. And we're that we're continuing to subsidize them, and it's cost us millions of dollars. It was all because of politics. Unfortunately, the citizens have well, to pay yeah. the price. <coughs> and it's taken a process that PUB does not want, would rather not have to go through, but we have to go through because PUB is the one that's losing money. I mean, they would like to, you to give them a number tomorrow, but the number should not be based on what politics is or what we think it should be. It should be based on recouping the cost to meet the citizens' needs. That's what the number should be because otherwise, if we don't base that number based on what it would, to recoup the cost, the percentage that we should be out, somebody's got to make up the difference. And that's going to be the rate payers. But I know uh, my, my expertise was not appreciated in the kayak committee. I got taken off. What can I say? You'll do the best you can to expedite this matter, and maybe we can get it done by Mar at the end of March. We'll try to expedite it. I'll just mm -hmm. also mention, Commissioner, there's a kayak meeting tomorrow, uh, tomorrow at noon here on the fourth floor. And, of course, public input is permitted. It's a publicly noticed meeting. But I'll express you all's interest personally about trying to expedite as much as possible and see if we can get something back sooner than August. And it would be great if the commissioners attended in the audience and listened to what's going on. That way they're informed. Okay. You so all can have special meetings like we do and expedite this matter. Don't go on a, a, every three weeks or once a month to meet. Not that it's PUB has to. I know, I know that. Sure. Okay, thank you, Gigi. Unless somebody has any questions. Okay, thank you, Gigi, for bringing us this update. Uh, number 22. Oh, 21. Item 21. I'm sorry. Report on the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee and impact fees. Okay, the kayak is going to meet tomorrow, so I guess that's the update. Everybody's waiting, wanting them to meet, so tomorrow I think they're going to meet. Okay, so that's taken care of. Has, uh, has Ben Medina met with them at all? Pardon me? Has Ben Medina met with them? I'm off the kayak committee, so I can't tell you. M Mr. Medina, have you done? Uh, Tomorrow's our first meeting. But have you been in touch with them, at least give them some literature and, and things like that? You have? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Gerzer. Uh, 22. Item 22, discussion regarding existing smoking ordinance and possible amendments. Okay, um, it has been expressed, and it was part of my campaign pledge to ban smoking in restaurants. Uh, I would like for this commission to consider that and um, look at the look at the um, uh, existing ordinance and come back in two weeks if there's uh, consensus here to make some changes. Uh, I think uh, other cities are going that way, and we should uh, we have a duty to protect the public health, and I think uh, this would be a good thing um, to ban smoking in, in those areas. If we, uh, uh, if we were to do that bond, take it to a vote, can you put this on to a vote? But I think we could, could we not? I think I've... Uh, wait a second, that's a good question. In San Antonio, they did that when yeah. I voted. When uh, that's a good question. Uh, but if San Antonio did it, we, sh we should be able to do it. Uh, the Constitution allows us to adopt the ability to have referendum elections in our charter, that's never been done, so we can't actually hold a referendum election right. um, without changing our charter. Okay, so we can have public hearings and get public input, and um, that's a good idea, but it won't fly. Sorry, we could change the uh, charter to allow for referendum elections. Well, we got we got uh, we 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 initially uh, 
reactivated uh, the idea of bringing the uh, Charter uh, Review Committee, if you recall, early on. Perhaps we need to call a meeting of those people and uh, put this on the table. Would that be agreeable to you gentlemen here? <coughs> yes. Okay. Why don't you contact the uh, people in the Charter Review and then have them come uh, uh, set up a meeting and maybe we could uh, provide uh, some things that we would like for them to consider to put up for Charter Amendments. Is that agreeable to you gentlemen? The earliest possible time we could have a Charter Amendment election would be two years from the date uh, of that one small change that was made previously. How long ago? Um, 2005. 2005. It's been about a year and a half. 2005. So we could we could follow a process of six months. By the time that comes in, then we could probably put it up to maybe the same time when uh, we have a bond. If we have a bond we'll try to election, we'll try to reconvene the charter committee. Okay, that'd be great. Get, and you. find out if, if that group still uh, interested. Make this one of the issues that that needs to go before the commission. I mean, the committee. Okay. Okay, great. Um, that is it, gentlemen. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion by Commissioner Longoria. Excuse me. Second uh, Excuse me. by Commissioner Atkinson. Before, yes. you, before you adjourn, I wasn't here when you took up item number. We, we tabled it. Tabled it out of difference. Oh, wait a second. We can go back if you want us to go back before I'd we adjourn. I'd can like you, to bring it up. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, allow me. Can we withdraw the motion to adjourn? Commissioner yes. Longoria? Let's, let's uh, withdraw the motion to adjourn. Okay, uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, okay, it's uh, off the table. Let's go back to the item that. Item uh, number six. Item number six. I asked that they be tabled for you because you weren't here. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Item number six, re reconsideration and action on the possibility of removing an airport advisory board member and appointing a replacement. <coughs> Thank you. Yes, <coughs> I uh, would like to. Uh, I think last time we met, I made a motion to appoint Ruben Rodriguez to the Airport Advisory Board, and I did not specify who he was uh, replacing. At this time, I would like to make a motion to appoint Ruben Rodriguez, who is a counselor for BISD, uh, and appoint him for the remaining period uh, to replace Ben Douglas, and not only the remaining uh, month and a half, but to uh, for, a new term. for a new term, I'd like to make that motion at this time. Okay, I'll second why the motion. Why don't you just have him start in January? Uh, Mr. Gosa or Mr. Uh, he's got a motion. It's legal. Uh, I'll second it. Is it is it legal to start a new term? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, this board serves purely at the pleasure of the city council. No. There was some concerns about the existing board member status there on the board. So this would just be enabling the new board member to take over, really to start a month early. That's what it would amount to. Uh, Larry Brown, do you have a list of appointees? I know there's two other ones coming up, and if we can do that now. I'd like to. There's somebody there that. I, uh, Let's do that this was, one now. Is that huh? Let's do this one now. Okay, we'll do this one. Just do this one. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Leo, yes, sir. Appointment. You stated he was a counselor for BSD. Yes. Ruben Rodriguez. Is this Ruben realize that? The airport board meeting is at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, sometimes he, at noon. He, he knows that. And they run one or two hours. He knows that. And he, he lives out by the airport, and he's willing <coughs> to serve. That's what matters. If he's willing to serve, and he's willing to accept the responsibility, then so be it. We, but that, that's just, uh, it's his appointment. He's already discussed like it with him. If he, doesn't fulfill his yeah, if he doesn't fulfill his duties, that's you know, right. then make it an issue. But right now, give him the courtesy of making that appointment. Oh, that's fine. Okay. I second the motion. Can we have a, 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 a all in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. All opposed? It's unanimous then? Chelsea, is that going to be okay, Chelsea? Okay. You, had, you had choice words about it. Is it going to be okay? Okay. That's fine. All right. okay. Uh, it's unanimous, City Secretary, even though some were very quiet. <coughs> okay. Thank you. you Passes. Hearing our motion. All, uh, okay. <laughs> all against? To make sure there's no nays. It's unanimous. Okay. Can we have um, uh, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion Second. to adjourn by Commissioner Longoria, second by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Don't forget about Saturday, 2 o'clock. Sam Stadium?
സാം സ്റ്റേലിയം 